Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the March 30th, 2009 Troy City Council meeting. Uh, we ask that you turn off all uh, electronic devices, cell phones at, at this time. And if you have to make a call to go out in the hall to do that, thank you. This evening, we are pleased to have with us David Crabb from the First Baptist Church, who will provide us with an invocation, and that will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. David. Let's pray together. God, our Father, thank you for the many blessings that you provide for each one of us. We are grateful for that. Lord, we come tonight and ask for the proceedings that are to follow, that you would grant to each one humility, and graciousness, and wisdom, that you would enable our leaders to make wise decisions that will allow our city to advance in the cause of peace and civility. So, Father, we ask for your hand of blessing tonight upon this meeting. We will thank you for it. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you for coming, Mr. Craig. May we have the roll call, Mrs. Bartholomew? Mayor Schilling? Here. Councilor Beltramini? Here. Broomfield? Here. Eisenbacher? Here. Fleming? Here. Powerlap? Here. Curlin? Here. Quorum present. This evening we begin our meeting with three presentations, and our first is on behalf of the City of Troy employees. Casual for a Cause program for December. Our Community Affairs Director, Cindy Stewart, is going to present a check to Patricia Rosen, Director for Care House. Welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as you all know, the employees, we do get to address casual on Fridays, and we raised um, money for December in the amount of $666.25 for Care House. And Care House of Oakland County is a leading resource in the prevention of child abuse and neglect and the protection of children through advocacy, education, intervention, research, and treatment in collaboration with the community. So it's my pleasure to give you that check. And if you'd like to say a couple Thank of you. Words. Thank you, Cindy. It's my pleasure to be here tonight to accept this check on behalf of the children and families we serve at Care House. Last year alone, we saw 4,000 children. Children who come to Care House are victims of sexual abuse and severe physical abuse. And we could not change their lives without your help. And I want to tell you that the city of Troy holds a very special place um, for those children in Care House. Do you know that uh, your public safety department donated backpacks last year for all the children, not many of them, but for the children who need to leave their homes when they're at Care House. And also your, public, your human resources department visits us every Christmas with bears galore, and we couldn't, we just are so grateful for that. So thank you tonight to the employees of the city of Troy for all their help and for changing children's lives and for believing it shouldn't hurt to be a child. Thank, thank you. you. Mrs. Our second um, presentation is an award uh, for the Michigan from the Michigan Concrete Paving Association to the Public Works Department Streets Division for the 2008 major road maintenance in the city of Troy. Is there, Mrs. Stewart, do you, oh yes, you are here. <laughs> Would you like to come forward, please? I'm looking about. <laughs> Hello, how are you? And uh, so I'm sorry, I apologize. Now, this is beautiful. This is an award. Oh, you want to come around? Because Cindy's going to take the picture over here. Oh. 
This is an award of excellence uh, to the Department of Public Works Streets Division for the 2008 major road maintenance in the city of Troy from 2009 and it's presented by the Michigan Concrete Paving Association. And I'd like to present this to you and also to ask you for this year, after we've had such a severe winter, we're getting all those potholes filled this year. And, and are we putting extra pressure on the county for all the county roads? Because everybody thinks that every single road in Troy is a city road and it's not. We usually call them once a day to remind them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's been the latest thing that I've been getting. Is, okay, now it's real spring is here, and then we had snow, of course, <laughs> but it's all melted. So, thank you. I just couldn't resist. This was the perfect opportunity to ask about that thank on you. behalf of the citizens. Thank, thank you. And our next is a service commendation. So if Ron Titter would come forward, please. You want to stand over here by me? Yeah. I will read it and present this. Um, folks, That we have a lot of people in Troy that volunteer on our boards and committees uh, here in uh, the city of Troy. And when they have served for a period of over 10 years and they retire from their position on a border committee, we give them a, a commendation. And it's my pleasure this evening to present this to Ron, uh, who served on our personnel board. Whereas the mayor and city council of the city of Troy wish to express on behalf of the city their appreciation to Ron in recognition of outstanding service to the community and whereas he has at all times furthered those ideals that contribute to a better community. Now therefore be it resolved that the mayor and the city council being the duly elected voice of the citizens of Troy express the city's appreciation and recognition for this distinguished citizen's service since February of 1983 through April of 2008 as a member of the Personnel Board. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be presented as a lasting expression of the City's gratitude and expression for Ron Tushert's contribution to the betterment of the City of Troy, Michigan, presented this 30th day of March 2009 signed by myself and all the members of council. My pleasure to present this to you. Thank you. And you want to introduce your lovely wife, Carol? You want to say a few words? Would you like to stand up, honey? <laughs> <laughs> you have to stand up. Be recognized. <laughs> I do have to admit, serving on the uh, personnel board for 15 years was really a challenging, but yet an educational experience. I truly wish I could have stayed on for another 15 years, but because of personal reasons, I was unable to do that. Well, we've appreciated what you're doing, and it's still good to see you every week at church. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the uh, certificates of recognition, and so we'll go to our regular business now. Um, there are no carryover items, public hearings, or postponed items. So our first area is uh, public comment limited to items that are not on the agenda. And I am looking to see if anyone signed up. The folks that signed up have signed up for agenda items. Is there anyone that is here on an item that is not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, then we will go to the regular business items. And we had a request for E3 and E4. 
from uh, members of the uh, citizen group. So I will call on uh, Gordon Shepke, who wishes to speak first, and then James Savage on E3. So. E4, oh, okay, so I'll move you down to E4. Thank you, yes. Mr. Savage? Well, we're on early tonight. Good evening, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and City Council. Uh, I was here last week when we dealt with this issue, and believe me, I don't think this was your finest hour. I was totally confused. Uh, Councilwoman Broomfield suggested at one point not bringing in someone, but have Mr. Lamarado and Mr. Murphy carrying on doing the job between them. And then she suggested John Zerlag which I don't know, it confused me as well as probably other people. Um, and I'm wondering why, because as I recall, um, during the time when Mr. Zerlag was city manager here, we endured more confrontational issues than any city should have to face. We spent countless hours and tens of thousands of dollars on issues like the convention center, the stadium, the I-75 interchange. It seemed like continual confrontation between city management and the residents. These issues were, I believe, initiated and certainly vigorously promoted by Mr. Zerlag. All of these projects were ultimately defeated, either by the voters or by council. And while the years were being wasted on these now dead issues, our infrastructure was deteriorating, the roads were getting better, uh, getting much worse. So it would seem to me that uh, Mr. Zerlach's track record here a city manager was not a good one. And I'm sure most of the people on council remember these times, so, which is why I was surprised that it was brought up. There's another question, and I'm sure um, nobody wants to answer it, is how come Mr. Zerlach, after three years of going to what I believe was a better paid position, um, is now in a position of coming back? So I don't know whether it would be proper to ask whether he quit or whether he was fired. But anyway, getting back to last week, the image that council projected last week was not good. What seemed like a simple choice of two qualified candidates became very complicated. Now, we went through this situation three years ago and Mr. Lamarado um, took the position for, what was it, two months or whatever. I don't recall that there was any problem with that. In fact, it appeared to me, being an outsider, that the trans, uh, transition went very smoothly. So, looking at last week's uh, vote, I'm having to wonder if, some, if there was something that we don't know going on here. Whether there's something about our two candidates that people don't want to say, um, which is understandable, but then if it's so important that it would stop them from, from being in that position, then I think that people should come forward. And I didn't see any other candidates' names up uh, for consideration. Um, as far as I'm concerned, either candidates are good. I have no personal knowledge of either one, and so I guess my views would not be pertinent anyhow. But I think right now that this council owes it 
to this city. They owe it to your individual positions as council members and you owe it to the governing bodies of which you are a part to put aside any personal or political opinions and appoint John Lamarado as interim or, or acting city manager and not only to vote him in but to do it unanimously so that this is behind us and, and we can look at this, this night as being a successful night. And let's face it, we're only talking about the acting city manager until July. So please do this and let's take, get last week behind this. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that is here on E3 that wishes to speak? If not, I will uh, return the matter to the uh, city council and um, there is the uh, appointment of an acting city manager um, item that is before us and um, I'm going to move the resolution resolved that the Troy City Council hereby appoints John Zerleg as acting city manager effective April 1st, 2009. Support. Moved by the chair, seconded by Councilwoman Broomfield. Discussion? Madam Mayor. Councilwoman Beltramini. Before we get too far into this discussion, I was hoping that we would have a more philosophical discussion than a specific one tonight. And and I guess, as much as anything, I'd like Mayor Pro Tem Howerlack to let us know if there was anything that he needed as information from either last week or something he wanted to add to the discussion before we got too far into this. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Howerlack. Well, um, clearly we're in certainly interesting times, and um, I think that each time um, there's been a need for the chief executive position here in the city, whether that was when um, Mr. Bacon left or when Mr. Zerlag left or when Phil here is leaving. And um, clearly the um, goals, I think, of most of us here on council are um, unanimous in that we want the city to succeed and we want the city to um, have a bright future. And certainly we're in a challenging environment economically. Um, unfortunately, um, nobody wants, we're here and nobody of course wants to be in this situation. And um, for the first time in, in recent memory, we've had, to, um, we've had to let go of some fine individuals from the city of Troy. And we have a lot of folks who are transitioning out anyway through retirement and a lot of key positions that we need to fill. And I think the important thing is that we have um, somebody who can kind of bring all of the disparate parties together and can kind of bring things back to a smoothly functioning organization and who can really jump into this thing um, from day one. I think those are the important things um, because we want to get through this rough period and we have a, uh, a budget process that we're, you know, we're kind of working through here and um, we've done a lot of the heavy lifting, and but it's, you know, we have our challenges and we need to have somebody here and hopefully, I know that all of us have the, the goal of um, making Troy a great city and, and keeping it that way. We might take different paths to get there, but hopefully who we decide as interim city manager, we can all get behind. And I think, um, you know, last week might have been a little bit clumsy, but we have uh, an opportunity to redo it tonight, and um, so I just wanted to express that those um, thoughts. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on this? No. Uh, yes, Councilwoman Kerwin. I, I still haven't had an opportunity um, to speak with Mr. Zerlag. I am, understand that some members of council, um, you're nodding your heads, have all spoken to him offline or somehow I have I have not so um, my understanding is that he is interested in this position 
Yes. Yes. Uh, I had a uh, call that uh, from Mr. Zerlike to myself indicating that he is interested in the position. And the reason that I brought forward his name uh, this evening is that I felt that uh, although it was unexpected that uh, he be available for um, this position at this time that I felt that the uh, majority of council, uh, if not all of council, uh, for this 120-day uh, period um, would uh, be working together as a team. And uh, one of the things that I've learned through my years on council, as well as my years being mayor here, is that Sometimes our original plan or our first idea doesn't always work out. But when you have time to reflect on things and look back and look forward, uh, I think that um, we have always had a great working team. The staff here in the city of Troy is the best. I'd compare them against any city in the, in the state of Michigan and beyond. Uh, and. Yes, we've had our rough patches uh, occasionally with things that we've dealt with uh, here on council, but I agree that we need to work more as a team effort together. And so uh, I was hopeful that in this instance that we could and um, that we can work through the things that we need to do together because we do have a great community. Um, people flock here, whether they're coming here to live here or. Uh, uh, have their business here, uh, come here for uh, the restaurants or shopping, whatever they're coming here for. They always say very positive things about Troy. Uh, and so um, I think it behooves us to work together on this. Mayor? Mayor? Uh, Councilwoman Beltamini? Mayor? Yes. Pardon? John Zerleg emailed me today and asked if his name was brought forward that these resumes be passed out. Okay, yes, would you do that? Thank you. <clears throat> I do have one. Uh, did you want to speak again? I, I think John is highly qualified. Uh, again, and you all heard me say this last week, much has, much has changed in three years. And I am somewhat concerned about the signal this sends to staff about whether or not it validates the changes they have made or it encourages them to go backward. That's, that is my primary concern in this action, particularly when the charter does not require us to appoint an acting city manager. The, would anyone else care to speak on this issue at this time? Madam Mayor. Pardon? Councilman Kerwin? Um, just in, in response, Madam Mayor, um, I echo your uh, comments, Madam Mayor, about our professional qualified staff. Clearly, we do have highly qualified members sitting in the room um, who have served uh, as acting in the past and are interested in doing that. Um, you know, there was a comment mentioned last week, and it, I know it was just made in passing, and it probably wasn't important. Uh, I mean, it probably wasn't measurable in this, but, but it, it's kept me up at night. And the comment was simply that um, I like you where you are. And I know that it was meant to our assistant managers in a nice, comforting way, because they do their jobs so, so well. However, um, I can see that they are eminently qualified to do, to do more and are itching and ready to do more. And I think we need to realize that there are times when people want to spread their wings and do things. And this is an opportunity for them to do so. Um, so I, I certainly... Um, I will cer certainly support the resolution that you have put forward, Madam Mayor. Um, I appreciate the resume from Mr. Zerlag, which does remind us of all of his accomplishments and the things that he did initiate when he was city manager here. Um, certainly appreciate uh, 
council member Broomfield's thought about how convenient that his house never sold and he's still available here in the city of Troy um, to serve us. But I do recognize that um, our missteps last week may have um, sent the wrong message, sent impediments to those who can do so much. And I would uh, hate to see such qualified individuals seek employment elsewhere where they could serve as managers in a heartbeat. Uh, I think it will be incumbent upon us uh, all, whoever is um, the acting city manager and in our search for a city manager, that we convey all the things that have occurred positively in the last three years, things that we've worked on, things we're working toward, things that we need to improve on, things that, that we think that we're doing fine on. Uh, all of that coming together, um, and I think that we can do that. And so since um, it was apparent to me that um, my efforts last week were not going to uh, come to fruition, I rethought the situation, and that's why I've come to the conclusion and brought forward uh, Mr. Zerlach's name this evening. I hope that everyone uh, that's been following all this would uh, know that we've put a great deal of thought, care, and attention into this matter. Uh, Councilman Beltman? I asked last week, and since you were the one who brought Mr. Zerlach's name forward, I expect that you have the answer. Knowing that he has other things in the fire, are, do you know that he is willing to go under contract? Yes, I do, and I was going to mention that if this uh, item passes, that that would be the next steps that we would take uh, is the setting up uh, of a contract uh, with an appropriate amount for uh, the time uh, during the 120 days. For the full 120 days or until a city yes. manager is named, whichever comes first. Right. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Eisenbacher? Um, I did call. Uh, Mr. Zerlag yesterday just because I wanted to ask him some questions um, and among those questions were the were the cost and the, the commitment and um, he mentioned that another council member had asked him about it also um, and when they when that person called um, and the discussion I had with him in terms of compensation and commitment was very positive and uh, I think we definitely can uh, come to a mutually agreeable agreement. Is there anyone else that wants to speak before we have a vote? Uh, Mrs. Bartholomew? Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? No. Broomfield? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerman? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, the next item that was requested was an item that is E4 that um, is going to um, take us some time to do and we're going to have to do in, in sections, but we'll call our usual um, Manner, uh, we'll call on those members of the audience that asked to speak on this item first, and then we'll uh, bring it back to the council table. So, Mr. Shepke, you indicated you wanted to speak on E4, and also James Savage, and anyone else that wants to speak on this item. Mr. Shepke, come forward, please. Thank you. I probably would have talked on. But by the way, thank you very much, Mayor and, and Council. I appreciate the opportunity to get up here and talk tonight. Um, I wasn't familiar what happened last week, so um, I didn't feel that qualified to jump in on E3. But uh, um, anyway, <laughs> John's name brings back a lot of memories, and they aren't all pleasant ones. And uh, the only thing I'd like to say in your search for a, a new city manager, I'm sure there's a lot of qualified people out there with the present uh, uh, 
situation out there in the economy. And I think it would, uh, the city manager, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the key positions in this city. And we do have a great city. We have uh, department after department after department. I think uh, there isn't a city around that uh, couldn't, uh, they couldn't beat hands down. But we have a key player here, that's the city manager. And we really, uh, as you all know, with the uh, countless hours that you put in, this is a key slot to fill, and we got to, uh, excuse me, it's not my responsibility, it's your responsibility to fill this position. So I would hope that you would uh, be very careful, and uh, sometimes uh, past practices do affect the future, maybe if only the perception of, uh, of things. Anyway, please uh, uh, engage somebody to uh, uh, pick a, a person that will be a, uh, a key part, a key piece of the puzzle in uh, the city of Troy's future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shepke. Uh, Mr. Savage? Yeah, I was wondering if the, these remarks may be a little redundant anyhow. But um, it seems to me the, I'm not sure what the cost was uh, last time I've gone outside to find a city manager. Would I be correct in saying something like forty to fifty thousand um, dollars? I'm, I'm going by memory here for the uh, uh, company, the firm that uh, ran for them. I felt then that we could not afford it, and I <coughs> certainly don't think we can afford it now. And do we need to go to an outside consulting firm for this? Um, if you're going to, um, if you don't feel like you want to make your mind up amongst yourself, yourselves as to who's going to uh, <coughs> take the position, then I would suggest you ask the heads and former heads of all city departments to sit down together for two hours and come up with a name. Or ask all present and former city heads to submit three names in order of preference and see if there's a consensus there because these are the people who know the city inside out. They know the inside of the city and some of them have been retired long, ago, long enough that they've seen it from the outside too. And I think these are the people who would be much more qualified to uh, search for a candidate than would some consultant firm from outside. And that's apart from the money aspect. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on E4? Seeing none, I will uh, return the item here to the council table. Um, I have indicate, uh, I know we have a number of processes to go through here, but um, I thought I should indicate at the onset that I have uh, spoken against conducting an executive search for city manager for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, we uh, laid off nine people recently uh, due to our um, budget deficit situation and what we're going to perceive for next year. I did not feel that the expense of um, conducting an executive search uh, would be fruitful and a um, wise expenditure of funds, and I have not changed my position on that. However, the majority of council did ask for um, the HR director, Mrs. Sears, to um, contact firms uh, and to send uh, RFPs on, uh, for a request for proposals for um, to conduct an executive search. We have uh, received that information and all council members then uh, had a worksheet in order to uh, rate them in uh, various categories and then we're going to uh, proceed with that uh, in this evening's uh, discussion. Uh, I asked Mrs. Sears how she selected the companies because we had six different uh, companies uh, send us RFPs and uh, 
she has indicated in a memo to us how that occurred. And um, my concern was that in viewing the data, there was such a wide range of uh, not only the cost factor, but the amount of information that each company provided us and their um, breadth of knowledge. And so I, I was um, questioning that, um, why that, there was such a, a, a big difference. I don't know if the others uh, noticed that when you uh, looked at the six firms or not. Uh, you probably did. Uh, and uh, so that, that was of some concern. However, uh, each of us has um, performed our duties, I'm sure, to uh, mark the form. So we'll proceed from there. We have a, a suggested resolution in front of us. Uh, the resolution on the table uh, is for later on. But there's also a proposed resolution in our packet here. Mm -hmm. um, that was sent to us uh, via email. Does anyone mm -hmm. wish to say anything before mm -hmm. proceeding further? Uh, Councilman Eisenbacher? Um, I would like to have some discussions before we move forward on a resolution or making a decision. Okay. Um, one thing I think is important, and several of my colleagues have brought it up, is that the cost and the audience has brought this up the cost of it. Um, I don't want the cost to be our last item. I want it to be evaluated along the way as we're going, as we had originally set out in the uh, proposal. I um, also wanted to state that my personal interest in going through this search pro process is to find the best person possible to be our city manager. Um, that is my interest. It may the best person possible may be one of our current assistant city managers. It may be an outside person. And I don't want to go and not look. So that's where I think it's important for us to go through the search process. Um, I was also quite surprised at the huge diversity of the uh, responses in the packets. Um, I believe the uh, like 146 pages. 148. 148 pages. And almost half of it was just one of them. Mm. So, very, I appreciate the brevity of the shorter responses because it seems like they just got to the point. And, but I also did appreciate some of the information provided in our uh, very, very long, oh, very, very long proposals. So, I am interested in hearing what they have to say when we interview. Right. Um, I, I have one more concern, and in, in I brought it up briefly, but uh, no one has said anything, is that uh, since we had a, uh, a couple of council members suggest firms uh, for uh, the HR director to send things to, I wonder if they feel the need to declare that as uh, we have had um, previously where people um, where we've had bids come in, you know, that we have to vote on, people have to say that, and I, I, I'm not inferring anything by that. I just wanted to clear the air for that because it was, they were mentioned um, in the memo, but not the specifics, so. Mayor? Uh, Councilman Eisenbacher? Um, I can say that one of the firms was recommended to me by a Choi resident, and I forwarded that firm's name to Peggy for evaluation and um, I have not done business with this firm ever in the past and I have not entered into any contracts with them in the past. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Mayor. Uh, Councilman Broomfield. Um, I too gave a card to Mrs. Sears. Uh, it was a gentleman that I bumped into basically. He was discussing, having a discussion with somebody else about what he did locally and I approached him and asked him if he'd be interested in sending in some information, and he did give me his um, card, and I forwarded it, and I've never done any work or of any sorts with this individual. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, 
Councilwoman Beltramini, I don't know if you want to say anything with regard to your connection with MML since MML is one of the firms and probably the world would like it if I did that. <laughs> actually, um, yeah, as the league has uh, responded to this RFP, and I will tell you that I have no governance over that particular department. I I will say that. The staff, such as Mandy Reed, who answered the RFP and prepared the document, and Heather Van Pooker, those people who work on staff and man this from a more clerical kind of standpoint, uh, they are in the annual budget, and we do approve the budget as the Board of Trustees, but I have no governance over what contracts they take, who does them, or any of that, even what fees they charge. That's an entirely independent operation. So, yeah. I will be happy to recuse myself from that vote or others if someone feels the need, but that is the exposition of my authority or lack of it over there. Okay, thank you. Any, anyone else? Councilman Kerwin? Um, I, as with you, Madam Mayor, I have concerns about the cost, of any cost going forward. We, um, I just don't know where it's going to come from. Um, I look at things that need to be taken care of. You mentioned earlier um, patches in our roads, which are a big concern of people. Uh, and things that we talk about are folks missing uh, because of our recent layoffs. Money that could be spent in other ways. and. And because of that, I, I'm going to suggest a kind of an out-of-the-box thing, which we often hear about, can we be a little bit more out-of-the-box or, or thoughtful in this? And I'm wondering if we might not offer um, acting, now acting city man manager John Zerlag, a uh, contract for one year and see where we stand at the end of one year in terms of our budget, in terms of our amount of money, and uh, give us some time to think about how to proceed rather than being in this dead heat. Now we are in a position where we have 120 days. That might be uh, a cost effective um, alternative to pursuing this. Further comments or Items that folks want to bring forward. Madam Mayor. Uh, Councilman Beltrami. I think we all have some concern about the cost of this. And in answer to Mr. Savage's question, I think it was 21000 plus travel expenses for the candidates and some administrative costs of the search three years ago. <clears throat> and there are some that are less than that in this pool and a couple that are exceedingly more. And yes, as we lay off people and as we try and make ends meet, that is a concern. However, we have called for a response to proposals. So at the very least, I believe that we owe ourselves, our public, and to some extent those firms, if for no other reason than our good word, to talk to them and deliberate on them. And in the end, we may find that we do not want to incur this expense. We may find that there is some other way to do this, but we have started down this path, so I think we, we need to deliberate to a point where we accept or reject the idea of a firm as a decision. And I think we will always second guess that if we do not have that deliberative conversation. Um, I will also share with you that when we get to it, there is a reason I go all these places, and one of them is I had contacts for several of these firms, um, searches they had done, people to talk to, and how they worked with, and I'll be happy to share that information 
when it, the appropriate time comes if anyone is interested. But I'm concerned too. I, I don't see, quite honestly, any reason in spending a third of a year's salary to give a search firm to find us a city manager. I think that's beyond what we can even consider, but that's my own opinion. Further comments? Uh, Councilman Fleming? I mean, I think Councilwoman Beltramini put it very clearly, and I agree with that wholeheartedly, that we owe this to the people who've already put in, responded to the RFPs, and to ourselves to go through this process. And I don't think we should shortcut it at all. The process of deliberating it tonight. The process of deliberating it tonight, yes. for sure, coming to a decision. And we don't know what conclusion we'll come to yet because, right. you know, we, we all have uh, right. rated our, I don't know whether you all turned in your sheets to uh, be tabulated or not. Um, did we want to do that at this, this point? Mrs. Sears, may, may I call it? Mr. Lamarado and Mr. Murphy, may I call on Mrs. Sears at this point? Sure. Mrs. Sears, do we need to have this proposed resolution voted on before we turn those in, or what? what's the best way to go here? In terms, first I have to apologize for my voice. The two times I talked to you this year, I've got a cold. In terms of the rating forms themselves, if they're completed, they can be turned in at any time. Uh, but certainly, it, we would recommend that there is a resolution voted on in terms of using the process. I'm sure there will be some discussion you'll want to have over that. But both the purchasing director, Susan Lerstein, and I, who are available to help you go through that process feel strongly in terms of how that should proceed and what will make the process be most efficient, most fair, and keep you from being accused of any bias or, impartial, or partiality. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, Councilman, yeah. uh, Councilman Broomfield and uh, Councilman Eisbacher. So I can understand this, because we didn't go through this process the last time, so this is all new. We, we rate, we, by using the evaluation form, each one of us individually rate uh, a point to some of the areas. We're going to turn that into you, Ms. Sears, and then you will calculate it, divide it, and then come up with the top three. Is that my assumption? Out of the six, these are the top three that scored more than the they will come out scored in terms of a ranking structure. Ideally, you would select the top three, maybe four, whatever you feel. The, the three and four, if they're close, you might want to interview all four of them. But they would definitely come out in a rank structure. The cost plays a big factor in that. I can tell you that the interview process would not provide enough uh, gain for the the two firms that are exceptionally expensive to have them placed in the top four. So the reason we would propose that you make a selection, narrow down the selection for the number of firms you interview is first off, it goes without saying you're probably not going to select a firm that is either the highest or second highest in terms of cost factor. So it would be a waste of your time, a waste of their time in our perspective. Secondly, if you don't interview all six, we have proposed an interview schedule of 15 minutes per firm. That would enable you to spend a little bit more time on the firms that you perhaps are more interested in and give you an opportunity to speak with them a little bit longer. Me? Yes, Councilwoman Brunko. Uh, the um, four points were uh, assigned to the interview, so the assumption I have is since we would do the interview after we turn the forms in, then that that's kind of a, a wash. I mean, you're not, I, I, I suppose I guess you could come back and, because we've already given you the sheets. 
or most some of us have. So the so the four points for the interview, how would that apply? The evaluation form itself would be turned in prior to the interview. ratings in the interviews. They would be scored. Susan would take those and, and have those tabulated. The interview sheet and I'm, we have a scoring sheet prepared for you if you wish to use that, and as well as that set of instructions. You would have an opportunity on a rotating basis to ask questions of the, each firm. Make notes, something that's very positive that they say, something that indicates they cannot meet your expectations. Uh, something that will support whether you are going to endorse or not endorse that particular firm. And then give them a rating on that question between 1 and 10. We would tabulate that, and it would be worth 4% of the score. And that's all going to take place this evening? Yes. Councilman Eisenbacher, you asked for the floor next, I believe. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, mine was the question of nuts and bolts that um, Councilwoman Broomfield just covered about. Because I was thinking in terms of the sheet we had established at our last meeting where there was four points for the interview, so I didn't see how we could turn it in until after we have our telephone interviews. Um, because it wouldn't be complete until we had the telephone and in-person interviews that we had discussed for this evening. Uh, yes, I, I do see that, but there isn't enough in the, the point area uh, for the interview that would uh, dissuade it once they've tabulated all the numbers. And what I did was make a copy of my sheet after I um, did the rating, and then I turned in a copy to um, okay. uh, Mrs. Sears and kept a copy for myself. Uh, I did uh, go over the, the questions that we're going to ask, and, and I think the questions uh, in the interview um, section are very good. I will give some clarification to some of the things that were not clear in their RFP and uh, also give us a feel for those uh, companies. But um, it, was, it was my assumption from our discussion last time that we were going to fill out the forms and hand them in so they could be added up and tabulated. And then we would um, go into the other room for the uh, teleconference because the, the uh, acoustics for the teleconference, you folks can come in, there are seats in the, around the room, but we'd have to go into the boardroom to do that uh, because of the uh, teleconferencing setup that's in there. And then we would come back out uh, for um, resolution on the item and continue on with the rest of the meeting. Because um, we do have other items that are on the agenda this evening. Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilwoman Herman. Um, would it be a problem to wait to turn in the form until after the phone interviews <coughs> take place, as Councilmember Eisenbacher just mentioned? Would that delay very much? It would shorten the process if we tabulated initially, but it's a computer program once we plug in the numbers, so that, that isn't that big a factor. If you wish to, if you prefer to hang on to the interview forms or the evaluation forms that list the other factors until after the interviews, you could do that. We would just hope that you don't, that you still rate independently and that you don't rate based on your discussions. The whole purpose of this, or one of the goals, is so that each of you has um, an independent, fair opportunity to have input into the process without being um, unduly influenced by one or the other. Mm -hmm. So that you can look at the proposal's response and see how well that matches what your expectations are, what you feel City Council's goals and objectives are, without being unduly influenced by by one or the other. Okay. Mayor, and that, and that brings up one question. We received information during the week that all six would be available for the phone interviews. And yet now we heard, I believe, in discussion that we should possibly eliminate some 
um, that are beyond because of financial. Is that is that what I heard? That we wouldn't then interview everybody that we talked about. We wouldn't be interviewing all six tonight on the phone. Oh, well, it would be council's decision. Our recommendation is that you narrow down the number of interviews that you conduct. Uh, the, all six firms have been advised that at this point we did not have a decision on how many firms would be interviewed, nor what time they would be, but they are prepared if they are called on to participate in an interview. Uh, there is one advantage in interviewing all six, and that is based on their uh, responses, it does give you some comparison then as you're looking at some of the ones, and even though some of them, you know, uh, were a lot costlier than others, that may or may not be a deciding factor. Um, I mean, I, I realize that cost is always a factor in everything that we do, but I think that getting the because we're going to ask them the same questions, the questions that will be asked will be asked of every single one of the companies. Uh, it does give us a chance to do some comparison in our own minds. Um, but again, uh, I think that uh, council members um, evaluating based on the written data first so that that's done independently and, and turned in, there's advantage to that too because you have time to read all the data, think about it, and compare them. Like at home, I printed out all of them and you know lined them all up, and then I looked for certain factors in each one, and then I rated those, um, and that was that was just helpful to me. I think it's important to remember also that the other three areas that you're evaluating, other than the interview. What you should be evaluating is how well they responded to what was requested. Right. In other words, you want to be cautious about giving them a second shot, if you will, at providing an RFP through the interview process. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and you're indicating that we do need to have this proposed resolution first. Uh, or I, I think it would be best if you did rule on how you want to proceed, if you want to use the process or modify the process, but how you are going to go about evaluating the RFPs. Okay. And Mrs. Bloom, will that be your recommendation too from the legal department? Yes, Mayor. That way everyone's clear and, and the uh, process is set forward. Okay. Do, Thank do you, you want that? Pardon? I'll, I'll move that resolution if you want to. Yes, I think it's that you're going to read the, the resolution so that folks know. Uh, Absolutely, so that the yes. world knows what we're voting on. Whereas the City of Troy requested proposals from six executive search firms to conduct a search process for the position of city manager. Whereas proposals from all six executive search firms were received by the March 19, 2009 deadline. Whereas the Troy City Council on March 23, 2009 approved the evaluation form for the purpose of rating the proposals. And whereas City Administration recommends the City of Troy standard evaluation process, which stipulates that each City Council member will independently complete the evaluation form for each of the executive search forms. Firms. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council hereby suspend City Council Rules of Procedure Number 28, Wire Communications, and be it further resolved that each of the City Council members shall independently complete the evaluation form for the six executive search firms and shall submit the evaluations to City Administration for tabulation. And be it further resolved that the city administration shall tabulate each of the individual evaluation forms in accordance with the approved weights and shall rank each of the executive search firms for council review. And be it further resolved that the city council shall select from the list of executive search firms the fir firms that will be afforded an interview. And be it further resolved that each firm selected for an interview will be given an opportunity to address council's questions and make statements to clarify their proposals and be it further resolved that after the selected firms are provided with an opportunity to interview that city council shall deliberate toward the selection of an executive search firm for the city manager vacancy 
and be it finally resolved that all evaluation forms shall be attached to the City Council minutes. Moved by Council and Beltman. Do we have a second? I'll second for discussion. Moved by Councilman Beltamini, seconded by Councilman Eisenbacher. Discussion, Councilman Eisenbacher? Um, the one thing, I'm concerned about switching to a two-step process just because of the time. The question is, is, do we have enough information in front of us to make the final decision this evening? Mayor? The, uh, Mayor Pertem Hauerlach? I would say the answer is yes. I mean, we've got a, a fairly good deal of information, and we actually went the last time we did this, we went on a lot less information and a lot less investigation. I think the bigger part, I mean, I think most of these firms are qualified to do the job. The key is, you know, getting the best one for us. And then from then on, you know, once they get to the point where, you know, assuming we go down this road, a lot of the work is our, is our job as far as, you know, setting the, the framework for who we want them to bring to us, how we select it, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I do think that if we want to continue down this process, I, do, I think there's plenty of information this evening to make a decision. Uh, for those that were not familiar with the process from last time, uh, remember at the beginning of this, uh, I had staff provide you with the group uh, from the Mercer group that we used last time, and you can see that they did uh, a profile of the ideal candidate. They uh, gave information about the community. They interviewed members of staff as well as members of the community, as well as members of city council. And when they had all their information compiled and they had questions that they would ask each candidate, then they began um, searching for candidates and then they brought back the information in notebook form uh, for us. Uh, so it was quite uh, extensive. But yes, everyone was uh, involved in providing information. We wouldn't expect a firm to just go out there and do it without getting the parameters that we set. Uh, now, um, Mrs. Sears did not uh, send out forms to those that had um, provided the service before, you know, because we were looking at, at new firms that you know, we had not used previously. Um, but I, I think there'll be enough information tonight, frankly, myself. Mayor. Councilman Kerwin? No, Broomfield. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilman Broomfield. Oh, nice and quiet. Um, just a couple questions in this resolution. The one, two, three, fourth, whereas down, <coughs> whereas city administration recommends the uh, city of choice standard evaluation process. I guess that's the piece that uh, I, I still continue to have questions, obviously, because I've not gone through that. I'm, pull, I'm looking over at the <coughs> uh, the information about the evaluation process. Excuse me. <coughs> and uh, I think we expressed a concern, or I heard Councilman Eisenbacher, and of course all of us are talking about price. And the phases, is the standard evaluation process in this resolution what has been suggested here? because we are doing this as a resolution, therefore we, we would be, uh, if this resolution were to be passed, we would have to follow these steps that were recommended. You're referring to the uh, uh, memo yes, from Mrs. Learstein. Uh, yes. Uh, the phases that you brought us down and, and made a suggestion, is that part of this resolution? Yes, absent a revision, that would be the process that would be followed. And that's where I, that's not in the resolution, obviously, but that's the piece I think that I'm not comfortable with. Um, the price, I think, should be, we're at phase one, where, for the sake of our audience, uh, they got to meet the minimum qualifications, which must be completed within 120 days. And I think all the information did say that it could, all six companies could meet that. Phase two is evaluation of the proposals, and I'm, 
I'm assuming that that is the um, evaluation form where we're weighting everything. So Correct. we're giving you this, you're, that's phase two, and you're going to come back to us and show us how all the numbers average down. Right. Phase three is the inter inter interview score, which would be something we're going to be doing tonight or attempting to do via the telephone. And then phase four is the price. And I, I, I don't know how that price can get moved up because we could have already virtually cut it in half from three, six to three before we ever get to price. Ms. See, I'm not, that's where I'm struggling with. Mr. Sears? And I may defer to the purchasing director to further address this, but if you're just looking at the high score and the low score, then I would agree with you. But in cases where the, the or not score, but the cost, but in situations where the costs are within two, three thousand dollars of one another, you don't want the cost to have an impact on how you evaluate the rest of the proposal. And that's the intent for having that at the end. Okay. Ms. Thurston? The only other thing that I can add to that is, is that I generally take the pricing in consideration with everything as it's moving forward. I've actually already done that phase, basically, for you. That's already been completed. Can, are you at I the microphone? You. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Would you repeat that? Yeah, actually, that phase has already been completed. I've already been able to evaluate the cost proposals and things like this and, and give it a number, basically. So it's, it happens in conjunction with everything. It's, it's, I sort of put it in a step order so you understand that these are the various things we look at, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be taken in order or anything like that. Madam Mayor. Councilwoman Kerwin. And that brings us back to the evaluation form itself. Right. Because really when I was looking at that, that's what I was thinking. When you kept showing the formula, or when we received copies of this is the formula you do it, it's just numbers. So it really wouldn't be varying from individual to individual based on the numbers that we have here. So the last 24 points cost a complete project. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine you just said you ran the numbers yourself. Right. I, and, and the... Um, Right above that on the form, it says person assigned experience and accessibility. I go back to those phone interviews because on some of these, as you can see, we have a number of different people. I imagine that the phone interview is actually going to say, well, we have so-and-so located here who's going to be your go-to person. Some did it on the form, some not. Right. Um, is it your suggestion, whomever, um, that we go just what was written on here? even though we can find out that information on the phone? So that's, that's the intent mm -hmm. when you evaluate the proposals, is that you are evaluating them as they submit it, uh -huh. meaning you're comparing one to the other, basically. That's how you're going to decide whose proposal is better. You may want to glean additional information from these firms, and as I um, conveyed to um, Mrs. Sears earlier, I don't have a problem you doing that um, and not give me your evaluations until after you complete the interview. My concern is, is that you have done this independently and that the forms that are, that are turned in are reflective of your opinions. And I don't have a problem with that. That's not typically how I do it in the real world, so, um, but that's not a problem in this case if you choose to do that. What? Do you understand? Am I making myself clear? As I just yeah, I think that you are. I I guess um, the first two two uh, ability to meet objectives, experience, qualifications. I can see being done, you know, in isolation. That's that's pretty clear cut. Mm -hmm. But as I say, if we find out through the phone interview that of the listed people, we are being assigned this person, and that's more accessibility. Right. I think I would want to have that ability to know that answer and put it in there. I mean, I'm not trying to mess up the system. No, that's okay. Whatever you decide, you do as a group. I mean, if that's yeah. what you want to do, I want to make sure you all do the well, same thing. Do I don't know what they do, but I do. That's, that's that just makes sense to me. Thank you. Mayor? Councilwoman Brookhill. Uh, segwaying off of what uh, Councilwoman Kerwin shared, it appears to me that the list of questions, interview questions, by the way, thank you for providing those. Um, they're nice. very good. But there would be some questions that would be applicable to some companies and not right. to others because of their packets. So Correct. 
Are we tied into these ten questions? Or well, you we want to ask those questions of all of them, but certainly you can glean additional information after you ask the question. If you want to follow up on something that they've said or something else comes up in the conversation, you can certainly, you know, probe that at the time the question's asked. That, that's good. That gives clarity. And I have, Mayor, one more question? Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, as we go through the standard evaluation process, Okay. You shared that we can not necessarily go through these phase one, phase two, keep our evaluation form, or don't keep it, give it to you and all that. Mm -hmm. How does that impact this resolution? Because the resolution is really saying we're going to follow this process. And that process, I mean, doesn't mean it has to be followed in order. It just delineates the different phases that we go through in, compu in computing the total final score. So there's all. flexibility in all of yes. in the process. Correct. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? We have a resolution in front of us, uh, moved by Councilman Beltamini, seconded by Councilman Eisenbacher, uh, delineating the process. Ready for a vote? Mrs. Bartholomew, the vote. Councilman Beltamini? Yes. Broomfield? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howard? Yes. Kerwin? No. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Motion passes. Um, Do we need a resolution to adjourn to our boardroom? No. Uh, Mrs. Bartana? It will actually be a recess, and the mayor can recess the meeting and he'll reconvene in that other room. Right. And uh, for members of the uh, audience at home and here, we're going to recess into the boardroom for the purposes of the uh, teleconferences with the companies because of the uh, uh, technical uh, capabilities of the system to do it in there rather than in here. And you're welcome to join us in there. And so we'll take a uh, five minutes and we'll appear in the other room, bring all your stuff.
because you know we'd be really happy to know how you're going to handle this. And with that, personally, I would have expected. Well, James Schwartz is going to use his background to do this, but that's not what we got. No, and you will want to ask. You will want to know who they're from. You will want to know that you have a consistent consultant to deal with. Accessible. Hey, could you give us the order of the uh, crimes against Blackhead? Blackhead? Should be in the meeting now. CPS. What list? Deacon. Mm -hmm. MML. Mm -hmm. Smith recruiting. Okay. And Waters. Okay, good. All right, we're reconvened at the back, and we're going to have um, Mr. Sears, you're going to call the first one, and then we're going to ask the questions in this order, and the names are indicated who asked the question. And we're to indicate um, notes, if we have notes to write down mm -hmm. on each one, and then we score them. From one to ten, yes. From one to ten. Each question, right, from each one question. to ten. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it will be much easier for you if you score each question as, as, you, as you go along. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Two questions. Um, will there be somebody timing it so we kind of know? Uh, that was going to be a question I asked, mm -hmm. yes. Can I hold the card up they do in speech, you know? Mm -hmm. I will do that. Yeah. And we're going to go get a lot of this. Rating one to ten, right? Yes, they will. And, and the second question is when we go through this, we, it's great how you've got this assigned so we can go right through it. If we have an additional question, do we wait till the end and then you'll ask for that? I would ask it at the time that your question comes up. I mean, especially if it's applicable mm. to, you know, the second question or the third question or anything like that. doesn't necessarily mean that it's, you've asked it. And Martin would like to contribute something or mm -hmm. probe something further. That's not a problem. And you're at the time, to... yeah, at the time the question is asked, probably. But it's a follow-up that has to do with the same correct area that that question's in. Correct. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be advised of when you're at 14 minutes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do we circle a Raider number? Are we assigned a number? You have a number. You have a number. I'll go through this. Robin is number one. Christina, oh. number Don't two. Don't waste your voice. Yeah, there's, right. it's, right it's, on, it's right on the, yeah. you see the number? It's yeah. right after your name. Yes. Right after your name on the green sheet. Yep. I just want to make sure that we have all the questions yeah. about the process. Right. And oh, and sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Everybody well, this set? should pick up everyone. It was quite long when I tested it earlier. Okay. If you want, Peg, I can, I can introduce myself and explain who's here and how the process is going to be handled that a person will be answering a question. There'll be a total of 10 specific questions asked. That would be helpful. Okay, so you is don't that going to be part of 15 minutes? Well, that can be introduction. You don't have to include my little minute or two that I'm going to take. <laughs> Not even probably. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Are we ready for the first part then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Charles? Yeah. Charles, this is Peggy Sears with the HR department at the City of Troy. How are you this evening? Oh, pretty good. Let me turn off this TV. I've been waiting here at the office. No, go ahead. All right. Uh, we are beginning the interview process for the evaluation of the RFPs for the executive search firm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to introduce to you Susan Learstein, who's our purchasing director will be, in essence, moderating the evaluation process or the interviews as they are asked. So, this is Susan Lerstein, Charles Blockett. Hi, Charles. 
I just want to explain who's here at the table. I have seven council members here, each of which will ask a question. Okay. There could potentially be follow-up to those questions. Um, I will start off by asking who is going to be assigned to our account. That'll be myself. That'll be yourself? Yeah. Obviously, you're the person that's going to partake in this interview then. Correct. It'll, we anticipate it going about 15 minutes in length. All right. Okay? All right. Um, I'll turn it back over to Peggy for the second question. Uh, Charles, could you describe your ability to complete the project on time? We've indicated within 100 to 120 days. And how will you handle the situation if the project falls behind? Well, first of all, I don't anticipate that it would fall behind. I would be giving you status reports. Um, at the beginning of the process, one of the things that we would do is sit down, develop uh, the plan of action, and then what I would do is um, very quickly develop key dates and activities. And at any point in time, anyone would be able to determine where we are in the process. Not just the council, but also any of the candidates. If they apply, they would receive the key dates and activities. And I would actually um, would like that to be published on your website. And this is how I've handled most of my searches in the past. All right. Council Beltorini. Mr. Blockett, um, you've done lots of searches in Michigan within the last four years. Uh, will you describe maybe the most recent of those, please? Um, well, the ones that I think would be more applicable uh, very recent would be like the Calhoun County um, um, controller administrator, the person to uh, you know to be the chief executive for Calhoun County. I uh, developed that process for them, and that was done. Um, we finished it up the end of uh, last year. How long did that process take? That was, I think, about. 90, 90 days or so, maybe even shorter than that because we had a very, very short time frame uh, because we wanted to have everything completed prior to, um, you know, Christmas, and we were able to do that. And we started it, um, I think it was, um, and this is just a guess I could get back with you with the definitive time frame, but it would have been less than 90 days. It's close enough. Any private searches in Michigan? Yes. I did the search for the um, chief uh, legal advisor for Sparrow Hospital, which is our largest hospital here in mid-Michigan. Um, I also did the search for Sparrow's uh, diversity director. Done a number of searches for nonprofits, um, Hospice of Lansing. I did the search for their chief um, um, for their executive director, um, I'm also currently doing a search for Sparrow's, not Sparrow, but uh, Hospice of Lansing uh, development director, the person to hit up their fundraising for them. Thank you. Councilwoman Broomfield. Yes. Um, hello, Mr. Blockett. Hi. Hi, Mr. Broomfield. Broomfield, is it? Broom, like to sweep with. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, glad to be able to talk with you this evening. My question to you would be, how would you handle candidates that apply outside your recruiting process? Outside of the recruiting process? Yes, if, if uh, we have internal uh, individuals on staff that may want to uh, go through the process of applying. Oh, everyone would go through the same identical process. All of the candidates, whether they're internal or external, or whether they're um, within Michigan or like when I did the search for airport director, we had candidates from all over the world who applied for the position. Uh, we put them through the same identical process. Um, and, you know, for instance, uh, I'm a high, I'm a strong believer in getting as much input as possible and get as much buy-in as possible. 
So, you know, we would have, um, I would have strongly encourage you to have an advisory board so it's not just you making the decision but you may have department heads you may have a committee consisting of even some of your key stakeholders in the community that may serve on your advisory panel and they would be interviewing the finalists but they would be serving in an advisory role mm -hmm. there is not to make decisions but it's just to give you their input on on the various candidates Final decision rests with the uh, with the council. Okay, thank you, Councilman Eisenbacher. Hello. Hi, I'm Mr. Eisenbacher. What process do you use to qualify the candidates? Well, I do um, an evaluation of each of the candidates. What we would do ahead of time is sit down and develop a profile of the ideal candidate. Um, we would list the qualities and characteristics you'd like to see in that person, their education and their experience requirement. Um, and then, you know, uh, what are some of the key, um, what are some of the key issues this new administrator needs to address? All of this we would lay out ahead of time. And we'd actually publish that on your website as well. Six different, um, uh, a questionnaire that would cover six different areas, qualities and characteristics you'd like to see in a new executive, what are the three most important issues the new executive need to address, uh, what are your expectations, it's very, very important. Uh, within a year after the person been, has been on the job, what is it that you want to see? Uh, that person uh, that would tell you whether they're doing a good job or not. And you tie this throughout the entire process. So that when you finally hire a candidate, you want to use those criteria to establish performance objectives for that person. And those, um, that questionnaire that I'm talking about, I would be asking you those questions. I would be asking um, staff those questions, you know, with your approval. We can actually publish that on your website where the citizens can comment on those things. Take all of that information feed it back to those five finalists. They would get that. They would get a copy of your budget. They would get a copy of your uh, audit report. Then we would ask them to develop a written plan of action as to how they would address those concerns. You want to see as many dimensions of an individual as possible. You've got an important decision to make. You don't want to make it just on the basis of an interview. All of this would be built into the process. For 15 years, years I had responsibility for all of the hiring of all of the executives in state government, developing the process that they would use. And that's the type of process that I would be bringing forth to you. One follow-up question. Do you typically interview people that would be outside of the references that a candidate would? You bet. Like. <laughs> no, we're not only going to interview them. But, well, let's break it down in two different ways. One are reference questions. You know, I would personally be conducting the reference checks of the individuals, and I would not just be doing references of the people that they may recommend. Like, for instance, um, once they become finalists, by the way, everything would be kept confidential until they're finalists. And then, you know, their names will be open to the public, public disclosure. And we would do two things. One is I would personally do the reference checks. And second, we would also do a background check on each of the candidates, which will consist of um, any criminal civil records going back seven years, bankruptcy records, uh, employment verification, education verification, bankruptcy, uh, and then also we would do probably the most important of all that I've learned through experience is we would do um, a newspaper article search. In essence, if there's anything in their background, be it pro or con, you want to have all of that. And you would have all of that information as far as the background reference um, investigation 
prior to your interviews. What we don't want to have is to go through this entire process and then be caught with, um, you know, something that, uh, you know, uh, makes us all look bad. The reference checks, because of the way the process is developed, you may not be able to do all of the reference checks prior to the interviews, but you would do it between the time a job offer is made and the contract is developed. Thank you. And we should remind them, we only have five, five more minutes left, is that correct? And we have five more people to ask questions, so. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. If I'm, if I'm taking too much, please cut me off. This is Wade Fleming, and I'll make it, I'll, I'll read fast here. How often does your firm plan to make visits face to face with the city council? Can you explain what those visits will entail? Uh, I would think that first of all, I would uh, there would be, you know, because of the Open Meetings Act and everything else, I would rec recommend that you have a selection committee that's just shy of a quorum. Okay, but for the final interviews, the entire council would be involved in that. Okay, I would uh, anticipate that meeting with that selection committee which will consist of council people, just shy of a quorum, um, that there would be at least about five or six of those meetings. Okay. Councilman Howard. Hello. Um, what happens if the city council is not satisfied with any of the candidates as a result of your search? Then what we would do is uh, we'd go back out and until we found a, you know, uh, enough candidates that you are satisfied with. Councilwoman Kerwin. Typically, what's the most difficult part of the recruitment process, and how are those issues resolved? Well, it could come up a number of different places, but usually if you have a well-laid-out process, a good plan, you follow that plan, you usually don't run into that many problems. Casting a wide net is key, you know, making sure that we're going after targeted recruitment so that we come up with a good pool of candidates that, uh, you know, that uh, could do the job for you. Mayor Schiller? Yes. Good evening. Um, is your firm willing to negotiate a best and final offer as it relates to project expenses? Project expenses. I, I'm just trying to get my hands around what it is that you're. You know, the, that's my professional fee. Is what I've laid out. Um, are you? So you know, usually that's that's what we go with. Then. Reimbursables. And reimbursements. Oh, re reimbursement would be actual cost. You know. Right. And everything, let's say if I place an ad somewhere, I will not place an ad without your prior approval. And that's we would sit down and we would say, okay, uh, we're going to spend five to maybe $6,500 advertising. Then I would stay within that budget and I would let you know where I'm advertising and you would have the final, or whoever you designate would have the final say as to yay, we do this, or no, no, we don't. Usually that person would be uh, someone from the council or your HR director. Charles, we're coming to the close of the interview process. Do you have any questions or concerns about working with this council to complete this executive search? No, I mean, I haven't met you. I have read material on your website, of course, but no, I, I don't have... Uh, uh, you know, the main thing is that we sit down and we lay out a plan of action as to you know, what your expectations are. I would be asking you a series of questions, and I'm sure you would be asking me a series of questions. Very good. Well, thank you very much for being available tonight. I realize you had to wait some time, but I appreciate your participation. I will be in touch with you by the end of the week, hopefully, regarding the results of this uh, evaluation process. Okay, I appreciate it. I will be, um, I'm going down to visit my, my granddaughter in uh, Philly, leaving Thursday, but I'll have my cell phone with me. Can I give you that cell phone number? Certainly. Okay, it's uh, very code 517 881 3300.
Thank you very much. Okay, thank Have you all evening. for your time. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before you dial, two questions. Yes. The question I asked Peggy, I'm not sure he understood it, but I didn't want to waste up a lot of time asking you. It was how would you handle candidates to play outside your recruiting, recruiting process? And my assumption was that this would cover our some of our management that may want to apply, and it, it wouldn't go through his process, um, or he would agree for that. Is that the reason for this question? Yes. That How would you handle candidates that apply outside yes. your recruiting process? Yes. Yes. He really didn't answer it. No. But I wasn't sure I wanted to give him much more clarification because of the time. Do they have to go through the same process? For yeah, basically you explained what you were looking for, and that's what the question was driven to. It's mm -hmm. to take care of people in the organization that may want to apply. Right, right. but he didn't, I don't think he, he Right, well, he got he, it, but yeah. he, he said they had to go through his process. Oh, yeah, right. Same okay. process. Yeah. He wants to be uh, David, you had a question? <laughs> no, that was it. Oh, on this, the, actually, on the question you asked, um, I think we should clarify it a little. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Reimbursable. Yeah, yeah make that reimbursable instead of. Okay, project reimbursable. Yeah. Okay. And it should be something that they're willing to negotiate. I mean, I know he said whatever they are, you're going to pay for it, but. Okay. And just make sure you identify the vendor on these. Do we have to put the points down? Can we put the points at the end? We can put the end. Sorry. I'll cut these out. Susan, do you want to find out who they are? Yeah, they should have. Yeah, we see. Yeah, figured out who they are. Okay. So we'll be calling CPS Human Resources Services. Hello, this is Peggy Sears with the City of Troy. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Not bad, thank you. You didn't have to stay up too late. <laughs> Marjorie, I'm going to turn this over to our purchasing director, Susan Learstein, mm -hmm. who will be kind of explaining how this process will go. We're beginning the evaluation process via the interviews this evening and interviewing all six candidates. Mm -hmm. and I will now introduce you to Susan Learstein. Hi, Marjorie. Hi, how are you? Just fine. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I um, just want to let you know what the forum is tonight. I have uh, seven city council members here at the table, uh -huh. each of who will ask you a question, possibly with a follow-up if they need clarification on any particular thing. Okay. And you'll have potentially about 15 minutes to get through the interview process. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I will start. Um, who will be assigned to our account? I will. You will be. Okay. Yes. And yes. So you are going to be the person conducting the rest of this interview. Yes. Okay. I will introduce you to back to Peggy, and she will ask the follow-up question. Okay. I'm having a little bit of difficulty. Well, she'll, you'll be able to hear Peggy, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. A little gravelly, but you'll hear me. Okay. Marjorie, can you describe your ability to complete the project on time within 100 to 120 days, and how will you handle the situation if the project starts falling behind? Uh, well, um, as soon as you tell us to get started, I can get started, and our process is, is pretty um, clear. We, we do the spend the time with you on the first uh, day or so, uh, and any other stakeholders to figure out what you want and after that I can move pretty quickly because we've got uh, we've done many of these uh, in, the, in the agency and so we've got a database and we use the, the typical sources uh, with NACO and ICMA etc and uh, can do whatever advertisement that we agree upon and we will negotiate right up front so we will negotiate the schedule and everything right up front with your approval. So we'll feel certain that we could get it done. Thank you. Councilwoman Beltramini. 
Ms. Young, thank you for joining us. Um, I appreciate the packet you sent. I'd like you to expound a little bit on the successful searches you have completed in Michigan over the last four years or so. Well, I've, I've only done the uh, search in um, the Ann Arbor Transportation Authority, and we're just finishing that up. Uh, so we uh, have, most of our searches have been on the West Coast. We expanded to the East Coast uh, in 05. Uh, with the regular recruitment, we started with the we've done uh, start with the feds uh, in '03. So we, our searches are primarily on the west coast, as far as city managers are concerned. Thank you. And I've done the searches on the east coast with uh, Florida and Michigan and the state of Georgia. But your only search in Michigan is not yet complete, and it's a transportation authority. Yes, we're, we're almost complete, uh, but that's the only one in, in Michigan, you're right. Thank you. Councilwoman Broomfield. Hello, Marjorie. My name's uh, Christina, mm -hmm. and I have a question. Um, how would you handle candidates that apply outside your recruiting process? Basically, uh, potentially we could have some in-house individuals wanting to uh, go through uh, the interview with us. How would you handle that? Well, we would encourage any in-house uh, applicants to apply uh, as anyone else. So they could apply as part of the process uh, as anyone else, and they would be considered along with anyone else unless you have a preference that your candidates uh, be uh, considered separately. Many times when I've done the, um, the searches, the, the municipality decide that they want to make sure that their candidates get included so all of them are interviewed. Others say, most of them just I have them go with the regular process. They apply like everyone else. Okay, thank you. Councilman Eisenbacher. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what process do you use to qualify the candidates? I'm sorry? Which? What process do you use qualify the candidates? Uh, we will agree up front the basic qualifications and a candidate profile, basically the competencies and personal attributes uh, that you would look for in a candidate, we would agree right up front, um, as well as the kind of relationship you would want the person to have, the kind of experience you would want them to have, and that would be part of the announcement and we would certify them based on those criteria. I look over all the uh, resumes and I uh, compare side by side the resume and what you've agreed to as the candidate profile and that's how we qualify them. Okay. One follow-up. Do you typically interview people outside of the references for a candidate? Do I interview people outside of the references? Yes. I don't understand the question. Um, when you have a candidate uh -huh. and you're you're checking them out for us, would yeah. you interview people that are not in their reference list or just their reference and the information provided? We, we typically interview their references. We ask them uh, for their references. And if they get to be uh, up front, we ask them for a, a 360. We ask for a supervisor, a tier, and a subordinate. And once if they get to be the short list, and after you interview them and you want to um, they become your finalists, then we say we've got to interview some other people and we want to interview, interview uh, more council members, more boards, and, and, and we go from there. But the initial round, uh, we don't interview outside of the list that they give us. Okay. Thank you. How often do you uh, plan to make face-to-face -face visits with uh, this council? And, uh, and we will agree that to that up front. Normally, I will give a verbal report or, or a written report every two weeks to whoever the contact is. But uh, we would agree right up front. And normally, the, the meetings could range anywhere from three to five. Three to five? Okay. Mm -hmm. Councilman Howerlack. I'm sorry? This is Councilman Martin Howerlack. And, uh, could you tell me what happens if the city council is not satisfied with any of the candidates as a result of your search? Uh, 
we keep going and find some more. Uh, we start over. Uh, our contract with you is that we're not finished until you're satisfied. So we would continue the process. Rarely does that happen, uh, but uh, we would uh, continue uh, the search until you are satisfied. Council, if that means reannouncing it and expanding uh, and making some more contacts, that's what we would do. I'm sorry, go ahead. But what would we do if um, we run out of time? We have a 120-day uh, time limit within our charter. How do we deal with that? You mean you, you following up on the earlier question? Yes. Um, that would be... Uh, 99% of the time, 99.95% of the time, we don't have to expand the search. But sometimes, uh, it, in a rare occasion, it may be that you have to, and that means it might end up outside the 120 days. Typically, what is the most difficult part of the recruitment process, and how are those issues resolved? What's the most difficult part? Yes. Um, the, um, uh, the most difficult part is probably is it how many, uh, the, the, the um, inter arranging the schedule with the different people that you want involved in the process. Uh, that usually takes the most time because uh, if you have stakeholders that you want to where you have panels, Scheduling those ends up being very difficult, and coordinating it um, ends up being difficult. Um, um, the also, if you have uh, council, it, it depends on if you want everyone uh, involved, that takes the time. And then the other part is um, agreeing on the questions. Uh, I usually develop questions, and uh, uh, depending upon how the, the selection committee or the council work, uh, getting some agreement on what the, pro what the questions will be uh, ends up being. And it's not difficult, it just ends up taking more time and it's because you're, you're pushing people to attend to it and then times the council people have all the other things to do. And so that ends up taking time. So I, I get pretty persistent and pushing to make sure we stay on time. Mayor Schilling, okay. Uh, is your firm willing to negotiate a best and final offer as it relates to project expenses, the reimbursables? Yes. Okay. okay. Anything else you want to add on that? Anything Are else? You ask, you're asking me if I wanted to add anything? <laughs> yes. Oh, I, um, we personalize our um, searches. Um, because we know that um, though we do searches for other people for the same type of positions, we use some common approaches, but we treat each search at, uh, very differently and we uh, customize it because each council, each city, each municipality is different. And so we want to make sure that what your needs are are met and what we do. In addition to that, we, we will spend time with any group of people that you want us to. Um, for instance, there in um, in Ann Arbor, uh, I spent two days interviewing council, the mayor, uh, city leaders, um, county leaders, etc. And and that happens sometimes. So we'd be glad to do that as well as we spend time not just looking at the search of the usual advertisements where we post people with ICMA and NACO, etc. Uh, we use our database and we call people on ask for recommendations because many times the best candidate is not looking for a uh, position. And so we try to find people who recommend others in order to uh, come up with the best candidate. Thank you. Marjorie, do you have any questions or concerns about working with the city council to complete the executive search? Oh, no. Or no. no. Marjorie, where are you located? I'm in Atlanta. Okay, thank you. Marjorie, this brings the interview process to a close. I want to thank you for being available and, and waiting. I anticipate being able to provide some feedback to all of the firms by the end of the week. Great. Thank you very much. Have thank a good you. evening. Good night. Good night. Good night.
Anybody have any questions before we call the group? I have okay. one question for the council. What is your preference? Would you prefer to introduce yourself or have me? Just keep All right. Save your, save, save, your your sa save your voice. Yeah. We'll just, yeah. okay. she, right. just save your voice. Just save your voice. please. You're speaking to him. Bob, hello. This is Peggy Sears with the City of Troy. How are you? Good, Peggy. How about you? Very well, thank you. We are interviewing this evening, and that's my purpose in calling you, obviously. Uh, we will be proceeding through a series of questions, and I'm going to turn the introduction over to our purchasing director, Susan Blairstein, who will describe the process for you. Thank you. Hi, Bob. This is Susan. How are you? Hi, Susan. Good. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. I just want to let you know what the forum is like here. I have seven city council members who will each ask you a question during the course of a 15-minute interview. They may follow up with additional questions as needed for clarification purposes. Um, I will start out by asking the first question, uh, who is going to be responsible for our account? That would be me. Okay, that'll be you? Okay. And so you're going to conduct the rest of the interview, is that correct? That's right. Okay. I will turn it back over to Peggy. Can you describe your ability to complete the project on time within the 100 to 120 days, and how would you handle it if you see it starting to fall behind? Um, first, the ability. Um, maybe a little background on me. The ability um, would... Uh, intertwined with my background. I've had over 20 years of executive recruiting experience um, focused in um, the Fortune 500 IT world um, and my ability to complete it within the time frame is probably contingent on my network throughout Michigan, in particular the Tri-County area and, uh, and the network that I've been able to establish over the years with um, a number of different business sectors from the Fortune 500 to um, the uh, business people throughout the community. And uh, working that network within that time frame, I've already started initiating some initial um, questioning and contacts and, and trying to set up a, a short structure, um, hopefully, to, to get the executive search. and. Uh, Within the time frame, um, it's just going through that network, interviewing people, um, getting a sense for what their uh, their heart is, what their background is, and if I sense myself falling behind on that, um, I've got a number of other resources, but I really don't see the uh, the process of falling behind. I've already thought through all the different avenues and the the veins of information and the the contacts and, and how I'm going to work this and um, I think uh, 120 days is more than sufficient. Thank you. Mr. Dronin, this is Robin Beltramini and I would be interested in hearing you describe your most recent successful searches both in the public and private sector here in Michigan. Pick a couple of your favorites. Well, one of my favorites is um, working with a company called Microsoft. Um, I had uh, an executive vice president connection, a uh, friend, business contact that uh, was about to leave a company called Oracle Corporation and um, was looking at other uh, Fortune 500 firms within the IT marketplace. I introduced them to um, Microsoft Corporation and um, for a general manager level. Uh, I initiated a conversation with their executive recruiting staff and, and put uh, my candidate with uh, a coordinated interview on a Friday afternoon that was going to be a phone interview between the area vice president from Microsoft who he'd be reporting to and him. And uh, mid-afternoon on a Friday, I found out on Monday from the executive recruiter in uh, Detroit here that the interview didn't go well and they weren't going to proceed with my applicant. And um, which kind of uh, amazed me, and I did a little homework on my applicant, 
And both uh, people, I think, were having bad Fridays um, because the match and the time that I spent looking through for all the different people and, and, and matching up needs and and uh, the DNA of what the, the individual is best going to fit, what the uh, corporation was looking for, the corporate culture, all the different in-depth reasons why these two people in this uh, situation was right. And I found out that uh, because of... Uh, earlier turn down from an individual from IBM that they didn't think they could afford my candidate. And uh, the individual kept pressing my candidate on the phone for what he would it would take to get him on board and uh, he finally pushed out a number that was extreme. And So I got those two back on the, uh, seeing each other face to face within five days and um, within two weeks he was hired. He started and four and a half years ago with a $250 million responsibility, hired 18 people out of Oracle from where he was came from, and since has been promoted four times and is now responsible for $6.2 billion of responsibility. And um, he had that kind of, of uh, wow ability, was what the word was from the manager hiring official. And he is now one of 19 principals within Microsoft. and. Uh, I think if it, I'd let that Friday afternoon go and not spent the time interviewing both parties and got an in-depth understanding of what they were about, what they were looking for, what was real important to the search and to the individual as far as the next career move, then, then it would have went by the wayside because of a bad Friday afternoon phone interview. And uh, I was pretty excited about the outcome of that and what's happened since. It's an absolutely great story. Do you have a similar one on the public side or nonprofit? No, yeah, as far as the municipalities, um, most of my experience has been with in, within the IT and the operations of people either selling or marketing or implementing into the uh, public sector. Okay. I have placed uh, somebody within the public sector right now. Thank you. Uh, Bob, Christina Broomfield, how are you? Good. Uh, Bob, my question is this. How would you handle candidates that apply outside your recruiting process? So if we had potential people in-house that were interested, what is your firm's uh, policy? Well, if there's people internally um, that want to interview for this, they, I would have them go through the same process if that's what you're getting at. Uh, if there was an internal referral that, that somebody brought forward, then I would do the internal screening and interviewing and, and suggest and put them in the same process as somebody that I'd sourced myself. Um, I, uh, I think there's probably quite a few people that are, are qualified, that, that you've identified, that uh, might be uh, potential candidates. And I think that might speak to one of the reasons why a contingency search, which I'm proposing, might be the best way to go about it. Um, what that affords the council and the city uh, and the people of Troy is to look outside and see the best of breed from uh, a mixture of hopefully uh, business world, business ethics, business finance, as well as municipal strength background. and, and be able to see what that talent level is and still be able to honor and, and look internally and give everybody and even swing at it. And so you have uh, the wide menu of looking at who's best going to serve the needs of Troy now and down the road. Bob, if I could interrupt just one minute, I want to caution you about the conciseness of your responses. I want to make sure that you're able to get through all of the questions in the 15 minutes. I appreciate that. What process do you use to qualify the candidates? Well, before I talk to most any um, applicants, um, the, uh, it's usually an inter uh, a semi-informal reference has already been done. If somebody said, Bob, you need to talk to Tom, and this is why you need to talk to Tom, and I ask them some questions of why they refer them. Um, and then I contact them directly, make them aware of the opportunity, and the richness of the opportunity. And uh, at that point, if there's an interest level, um, I do a little other inf informal reference checking if I can. And then I sit down myself face-to-face -face with them and go through a pretty in-depth 
personal interview. And um, at that point, I write up a, uh, a description of what I've seen and what I think this applicant can bring to the table. Okay. That ties in a little bit to my follow-up question is, do you typically interview people outside of the references a candidate would provide? Yeah, I do. If I can find a connection that we have a common group and interest or um, a common business interest, um, I'll do an informal reference and, and ask questions that um, I don't think um, people will mind answering as far as um, you know their opinions about the individuals and some experiences they might have had within either a business context or even a personal context if they're comfortable sharing that. Okay. Bob, how often does your firm plan to make face-to-face -face visits with the City Council? As often as needed. Um, I, as I tried to explain in my scenario, um, I think that's critical for me to sit down and, and find out the depth and the breadth of the needs. And, and, and I think different people are going to look at it from different angles and different shades. So um, if I can find um, the best fit, um, Ever has work putting a round thing in a square thing. So, mm -hmm. if I can find, uh, from your opinion and others' opinions, of exactly what's worked in the past and what experience has been learned from past um, situations, boy, that's awful good for me to hit the bullseye. Mm -hmm. Martin. Martin. Uh, yes, Martin Howard, like here. Uh, could you tell me what happens if the city council is not satisfied with any of the candidates as a result of your search? I think fr frustration on my part, probably. Um, <laughs> um, if uh, if there if there isn't, then I've got to go back and retrace my steps. Um, I either didn't catch something, I I didn't um, ask the right questions, I didn't perceive exactly what you were looking for, and I need to find out. Now, maybe during the process, the um, qualifications and the needs have changed, and I need to address or adjust to that better. But there's something in the process if I'm not hitting that. And, uh, and I need to go back and be more thorough on uh, my investigation of what you're looking for. Typically, what is the most difficult part of the recruitment process, and how are those issues resolved? Very good question. Um, the most difficult is matching up the heart of what you want and the heart of what they want. Um, and, and, and discerning that. I think that takes time, I think that takes experience. I think that needs to be um, something that uh, you've made uh, mistakes on and you've had successes on and, and you can bring that experience to the table. It's the toughest part to really discern what you're exactly looking for because there's practical things that go on and, and practical needs in the position, but there's other intangibles that you need to read through between the lines and, and experience and history is going to help that and um, I actually forgot the second part of the question that's fine thank you okay uh, Bob Louise Schilling here is your firm willing to negotiate a best and final offer as it relates to project expenses the reimbursable I'm sorry, I, I don't. I didn't hear that very clearly. I said, is your firm willing to negotiate a best and final offer as it relates to project expenses? Speaking yes, about the reimbursable, do you want to clarify that a little more? Well, um, if I understand the question correctly, um, final expenses. Um, one of the things that I put in the proposal was. Um, some of the administrative costs or travel costs. I don't see that being very formidable on this search, but it's always something that I put in, and I'll be glad to uh, delineate that to where both sides are very comfortable in it. Okay, thank you. Bob, this brings our interview process to a close, but I'd like to ask if you have any questions or concerns about working with this council to complete the search. No, I, I don't, and um, I just want to thank uh, one and all for uh, the opportunity to uh, be able to speak to you tonight, and um, I look uh, forward to hopefully working with you. Thank you, Bob. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, any questions from the next one?
Okay, next one. Yeah. Oops. It just got worse. I am, sure. <laughs> and we are interviewing all six candidates. And I'm going to turn this over at this point to Susan Learstein, who's our purchasing director, and will explain how the process will progress. Okay, go ahead. Hi, Bill. This is Susan. I just want to explain that uh, what the forum is like. I have seven city council members sitting at the table, each of whom will ask a single question. Um, there's potential for a follow-up question if they need any kind of clarification to your answers. The interview will take approximately 15 minutes to complete. Okay. Okay. Um, who will be assigned to our account moving forward? Well, that's uh, a decision that you can make as the client. Uh, we have several people who do this through the league, and you can specify me or one of the other uh, people who are listed. Okay, and so tonight you're the one who is going to conduct this interview. That's correct, yes. Okay. I'll turn it back over to Peggy. Bill, can you describe your ability to complete the project on time within the 100 to 120 days, and how would you handle it if it started falling behind? Well, I think uh, your question is a good one. It's important to uh, keep the process moving because if you don't particularly after the ad is placed, uh, you may lose good candidates. So what I like to do is to uh, meet with the council at the time that we would develop a profile for the position and actually set up a schedule at that time. We would determine uh, all the steps all the way through the date of the interview. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that schedule then is set and we stick with that unless the council has a good reason to make a change. Thank you. Bill, it's Robin Beltramini here. I need to have you pick a couple of your favorite searches in Michigan that have been successful in the last four years and tell us about them. Well, it would be difficult to single out. <laughs> uh, for one of the most recent one I just completed was happened to be for a township, uh, Park uh, Township, which is next to Holland, Michigan. Uh, we ended up with uh, 61 applications in that case. Uh, the council selected, uh, well, I gave them a short list of about eight. From that, uh, actually it was a board in this case, selected three that they wanted to interview. Um, we had the interviews about a week ago, and uh, just tonight they were scheduled to approve a contract with their lead person. Uh, last year I did a, a search for Dwajak, uh, I've done them for uh, Battle Creek, uh, really cities and townships of all sizes. And to turn them successful, uh, the measure of that is whether the council or the board is satisfied with the person that they have uh, narrowed it down to. And I don't think we've had any, maybe one case over the years where we had to re-advertise. But generally speaking, the uh, process produces a, a candidate that the board or the council was satisfied with. Thank you. Uh, yes, Bill, Christina Broomfield here. The question I have is uh, if we have uh, in-house uh, individuals who are wanting to go through the process, how does your um, company handle that, your recruiting process handle that? Well, I always mention that at the first meeting of the council, and uh, what I recommend is that you say to uh, anyone who happens to be with the organization currently or anyone who may be uh, local, is that they ought to apply in a timely manner and go through the same process, same timeline as every other candidate. Uh, I think what you want to avoid is a situation where you have an internal candidate who comes in at the 11th hour 
and basically says, well, now that I've seen the process and the competition, I'd like to apply. I think you want to avoid that by telling everybody that they have to apply uh, in a timely fashion and observe the same timelines as, as anyone would. Uh, as far as internal candidates, I think that's great. Uh, they should be considered along with uh, everyone else. And uh, it's always been my policy to advise the council of all of the internal candidates so that they know who those folks are, uh, unless they happen to request uh, confidentiality. Thank you. Okay. What process do you use to qualify the candidates? Well, that's an interesting part of the whole process. Uh, I go through every resume and uh, look for experience and the kind of experience they have. I compare the resume with the profile that you all have developed or would develop. I then send out a, uh, a list of uh, written questions, and I use the same questions for each of the candidates uh, who appear to be promising. And uh, those questions are designed to uh, take any surprises out of the process to make sure that I have consistent information on all the applicants. And if there are any uh, ambiguities in their resume, those are ferreted uh, out in that uh, process. Uh, after reviewing the response to those written questions, if they still appear to be promising, then I will uh, sometimes do a telephone interview Sometimes that is necessary if I happen to know the candidate. And then I will do some, start doing some reference checks, um, calling people uh, that they list as well as other people that, that I would know in the area who might be familiar with their work. So I'll have a pretty good picture of uh, each of the candidates before I develop a short list for the consideration of the council. Thank you. You also covered my follow-up. Okay. How often do you plan to make face-to-face -face with the City Council, meetings with the City Council during this process? Well, again, that's up uh, to you folks. Uh, uh, what we normally do is we'll have that initial meeting where we'll talk about the process, uh, we'll develop the profile, we'll develop the timeline, the schedule for the process. Uh, the next meeting would be uh, after the deadline has passed for the applicants to respond, and I would uh, give you a short list of uh, possible candidates uh, a few days ahead of that meeting. And at that meeting, it would really be up to you to decide uh, who you want to invite in for interviews. The third session then would be uh, the day of the interviews. Now, we can have additional meetings, uh, which sometimes uh, cities will request. Uh, for example, some cities like for me to uh, meet with department heads as a group or one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, in the case of Park Township, they wanted me to sit down individually with board members as well as having a, a board discussion on the profile as well as the process. So these, these additional meetings really uh, are at your, you know, for you to determine if you'd like to have those. <clears throat> Martin Howard, like here. What happens if the city council is not satisfied with any of the candidates as a result of your search? Well, uh, what we would do then is advertise again. Uh, this process, I tell people, is a little bit like uh, fishing in the river when the, the uh, salmon are running. Every time you throw your line in, uh, you get a different uh, pool of candidates to some degree. So if you advertised in, uh, in May, and then you had to re-advertise in July, uh, you'd probably have a, a different set of candidates. So that doesn't happen very often, but if it does, you simply have to advertise again and uh, see what happens. Typically, what is the most difficult part of the recruitment process, and how are those issues resolved? do the job. And uh, 
that that part isn't difficult for me, but it might be difficult for you to then decide uh, who you want to make your lead candidate and extend an offer to. And if that's the case, if you end up with five people or three out of five that you determine could do the job, they've got the background, they've got the intelligence, the skills that you're looking for, then it becomes a question of uh, fit for the organization. And you folks are in the best position to measure that uh, that question of who would fit best. And sometimes that's a little difficult, and sometimes it isn't. It depends on your candidates and, and how much there is an alignment in the thinking of the uh, members of the council. Hi, Bill. Louise Schilling here. Um, is your firm willing to negotiate a best and final offer as it relates to project expenses, the reimbursables? I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand that question. Are you talking about negotiating a contract with a candidate? Or? No, no, with you, with your firm. Oh, you really have a set, a set price and then you have your reimbursables? Well, uh, I think you'll find that our, our price is, uh, is probably better than competitive. Uh, if you're asking if we would do it uh, for less than what's uh, specified in the offer, I think the answer is no. Yeah. You, you specified on page nine um, quite a few particulars. Thank you. Well, this brings our interview process to a close. Excuse me. <laughs> to a close, but I would like to know. Excuse me. <coughs> Bill, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask of this council? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, I've done a lot of these uh, searches over the years, and uh, they're really kind of fun and intriguing, and I think even though the uh, decision that you have before you may seem uh, a difficult one, and not to say that it isn't an important one, I think you'll find going through the process that we use uh, uh, will work to your advantage, and uh, you'll probably be pleased with the results. Uh, the only other thing I would mention is that I have been active not only in the state organization but the national organization. I'm a past president of uh, ICMA, and I just mention that because it does give me a lot of good contacts, not only in Michigan but across the country, to encourage applicants and also uh, to check people out more thoroughly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again, Bill, for participating in this process. Um, hopefully the, um, we'll be able to um, get back with you by the end of the week and render a decision after all um, six candidates have been interviewed. Thank well, you. Thank you for your time, and I wish you good luck in your process and your final selection. Thank you so much. Okay. Questions or anything before? Peggy, have a new voice. 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 Peggy, have a new voice.
but um, we're proceeding through this interview process, and um, you are our fifth candidate. Okay. I um, have got seven council members here around the table. Of okay, which, can you hear me all right? Oh yeah, you're coming in oh. very clear. Okay, good. Um, of which each one will ask a question and perhaps a follow-up if they need more clarification to your response. Okay. Um, the interview should take about 15 minutes, so please make sure your answers are concise. I'll be sure. <laughs> um, first question is, who is going to be assigned to our account? Well, there's only one person here, and that's me. That's you. Okay. And you're going to be the one conducting the rest of the interview, correct? Correct. Okay. The second question is, describe your ability to complete this project on time, knowing that you have 100 to 120 days to do so, and how would you handle the situation if the project falls behind? Well, I, in my uh, answer submitted to the original request for proposal, mm -hmm. I gave a, uh, a timeline and what I felt uh, would be the right amount of time to be allocated for each step in the process. I also indicated what potential problems there might be that could uh, cause things to take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And so those things can be addressed up front rather than waiting for the problem to, to arrive. But to be perfectly honest with you, mm -hmm. 120 days is a lot more than I ever have or usually take, uh, except in some rare occasions where it's a very unusual position or the compensation isn't a fit or something like that. Uh, so although I don't want to create an unrealistic expectation, that's, that's a lot more time than I usually need to take to complete a search. Thank you. Mr. Smith, thank you. I would like to know a little bit about some of your most recent successful searches in Michigan, both mm -hmm. in the public and the private sector. Okay. Well, uh, in order to, to answer that question, uh, I, I need to depart from the, the concept that they're going to be recent, recent searches because Michigan, unfortunately, hasn't been a, uh, a, a prime place for me to, to make a living recently. Mm -hmm. uh, over the years, over the last 22 years that I've been doing this, I'd say most of my searches have been conducted in Michigan, uh, mostly with uh, large corporations. I'll give the example of Down and Company, which is a large financial printing company. They have an office in downtown Detroit. They have other offices throughout the country. Uh, internationally, they're the world's largest printer of financial documents for the securities industry primarily. And uh, I've staffed many of their uh, top level positions, senior president, senior vice president for sales, uh, most of the top uh, operational positions here in their Detroit office. Uh, and going to the nonprofit side, uh, I've worked extensively with a uh, number of nonprofits, one in Grand Rapids, uh, the Acton Center, Another one in Midland, Michigan, the Mackinac Center. I've, I've filled several senior positions with uh, that organization. I've also worked with a, uh, the largest Michigan-based pharmaceutical company, which is Ferndale Labs, uh, located not unexpectedly in Ferndale. And uh, I've, I've filled uh, a very large uh, search operation, uh, which resulted in filling uh, uh, West Coast Vice President of Sales, and uh, I believe about four or five national sales positions in a number of different cities. But and uh, uh, go ahead. Well, it was just I, I appreciate all of that, and it sounds like a breadth of experience, but nothing really successful that you're proud of in the last four years in Michigan. Well, no, nothing, nothing at the level that I think that you're looking for a senior level. Uh, manager with uh, probably multi-million dollars worth of, of uh, responsibility. Uh, no, not, okay. not in Michigan. Thank you. In other places, yes. Uh, yes, um, Mike, Christina Broomfield here. 
Uh, my you. question, yes, hello. My question for you would be, how would you handle candidates that apply outside of your recruiting process? And to give a little bit more clarity here, we have candidates within our organization that are interested mm -hmm. in applying for this position. Uh, what would be your um, process or your, your policy on that? Well, there's two, there's two sides to that. Obviously, one is uh, the cost. If, if, if you have me working on the search, and then you end up hiring somebody that doesn't come through me, you probably want to know if you owe me any money, and the answer is no. Good. Uh, you don't. <laughs> uh, now, uh, on the other hand, though, if, if we're working together as partners and we want to make sure that the, the very best person is selected and that there's no uh, option of, of hiring somebody that's going to turn out to be an embarrassment for those who are involved in the search, then you may want to consider having that person go through the same screening process as all of the candidates, which means effectively what, what will happen is uh, a candidate comes to your attention, you, you forward the candidate to me, I will screen the candidate, interview the candidate, do a background check on the candidate, just like I would the other candidates. Uh, and and then, then you're maximizing your, your safety net. Now, if, if that's the person you end up hiring, then I'll charge you a nominal amount for, for the hourly work that I spent uh, doing the reference checks and the background checks and the interview for that person, but I'm not going to charge you a, uh, a search fee for that. Great. Thank you. Sure. What process do you use to qualify the candidates? Well, there's, there's, um, there's only one main process to qualify them, and that's my looking at the resume and talking to the candidate and evaluating their experience, uh, their qualifications, and their veracity. If I find that, that a candidate has intentionally misrepresented anything, has lied on their resume, has uh, intentionally obfuscated an issue, I'll immediately reject that candidate. Because I, I, I believe that in addition to general intelligence, the most important factor in selecting a candidate is conscientiousness. And if a candidate is is anything other than uh, completely above board, that's the main reason to reject them. And if, if that's, uh, if, if a candidate that you're talking to has been judged to be straightforward and honest, then you can have a, uh, a good discussion about what their real qualifications are. And for the most part, an honest candidate is not going to want to get themselves hired into a job that they're not qualified to do. That, you know, a, a, a reasonable average person just won't do that. And so that's the primary method of, of screening. Now, I'm, I want to make sure that I'm answering the question that you're really asking. So, so just uh, indicate if, if that's what you were looking for or if I missed the mark on that. Um. That's along the lines. I do have a follow-up, though, and that is, do you interview people outside of the, the references that are provided by a candidate? Absolutely. You, you, generally speaking, you know that the references are going to say good things about the candidate, so they're not really of much use, except to the extent that if you talk to two or three references and they're, they sound like they're describing the same person, that's, that's a comforting consideration, uh, and, and, and that's not always the case. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm very much committed to the, to the idea that uh, you've got to talk to people that work with the person but are not on their reference list. And I have a number of ways of, of sourcing those types of people. Uh, some are pretty obvious and some are not really so obvious at all, but, but uh, I rely much more on those interviews than I do on, on the interviews with the references provided by the candidates. Thank you. Okay, Michael, sure. how often do you plan to make face-to-face -face visits with the city council and explain what those visits would entail? Well, I, I don't have a, um, a straightforward answer uh, for you on that, I, I have to admit, uh, because generally speaking, I rarely meet face-to-face -face with my customers. Um, I, I'll make a trip to, to visit with them and get to know them, not necessarily, though, in, uh, in conjunction with any particular search that I'm working on. Uh, however, if, if that's something that's an important consideration for you, 
uh, it's very easy for me to accommodate you on that, and I'd be happy to do so. Um, but I, I would I would put that sort of thing into the category of good communication. So I think that good communication is essential. Uh, if you would like it to be in person, I'm happy to accommodate you. Could you tell me what happens if the city council is not satisfied with any of your candidates as a result of your search? Well, that's, that's obviously a very serious problem, uh, but, but generally the solution to that problem is, is provided at the very beginning of the search when we all come to an agreement, agreement on what we're looking for in a candidate and what qualifications they have to have and uh, what experience they would need to have and so forth. And if, if I have a sense that, the, that as that process is going on, that we're not all generally thinking in the same way, uh, that that's the time to, uh, to ring the bell and say, well, wait a minute, you know, this, this is your problem here. Because honestly, it's, it's not that difficult for me to find the candidate that, that's been specked out. That's, I'm not going to say that it's easy, but that's not that's not uh, a, a real challenge. Uh, the real challenge is to make sure that all the questions have been asked up front, and that that the answers to those questions, uh, everybody in the room is going to have somewhat level of either agreement, or uh, if if not in agreement with it, that they'll at least acquiesce to it. Typically, what is the most difficult part of the recruitment process, and how are those issues resolved? Well, the most difficult uh, part of the recruitment process is is, uh, is that part I just described, because usually what happens, and this may not apply in your case at all, uh, because it's a little bit uh, different the way you get to um, determining the compensation issues, but. Usually what happens, and this is probably not, not a real surprise, the customer wants a certain level of expertise and capability, but what they have to, to spend in terms of salary isn't going to get them that. So I have to break the news to them that, that it's just not going to work. Either they have to spend more money or they have to reduce their expectations a bit. Uh, and that's usually followed by, well, what about you know somebody that's, uh, that just got laid off or, or somebody that's uh, just entering the workforce. And you know, you can always hope for those sorts of oddball things to come along, but you usually end up paying at the other end for that because they don't stay as long in the job if they're being underpaid. So uh, that's the most difficult part is to, to get the customer to understand what it is that, that's available to them. And um, usually I find that uh, they fit to me a little bit about the amount of money that they have available to spend on the position because they're not sure if they can trust me to um, ha have their interests, their best interests at heart in terms of selecting candidates. Have you ever done a city manager search? No, I absolutely have not. And it, it would um, be a very interesting addition to my portfolio. Uh, but I can tell you that I've had had that question asked to me many times with the, um, the, the name or title of the position being somewhat di different. Uh, have, have you ever uh, placed a, a senior person at a university? I was asked by Northwestern University. Uh, have you ever placed a person uh, in a fundraising capacity at a small college? Have you ever uh, found a publications director? Or have you ever found a marketing uh, chief Marketing Officer, really when you get down to it, uh, every position is a little bit different uh, because the responsibilities, the type of employer, uh, the, the location, the, the, the economy is different from the time that it was last done. It's, it's, a, moving, it's a moving river and every time you step in it's, it's in a different place. Are you? So, are you, is your firm willing to negotiate a best and final offer as it relates to project expenses, the reimbursables? Uh, you're talking about my, my, uh, my fee, my service fee? Fee and, and the, um, 
reimbursables, the project expenses? Well, I, I, in, in my proposal, I indicated that uh, I'm not, I'm not going to charge you for any expenses because I don't anticipate any other than uh, the cost of advertising, which I will bear myself, uh, or really it, it comes out of the service fee. If you don't, don't end up hiring from me, then I, uh, I just have to eat that cost. Um, but in, in terms of, of reimbursement, the only other expenses I anticipate would be uh, those candidate-related expenses, such as you might uh, incur if you have to fly somebody in to, um, to meet with them, to have an interview, and uh, maybe they will have to fly in a second time to okay. bring uh, uh, their, sorry, we've, their we've, wife or their husband. We've used up the 15 minutes, so sorry. Okay. That's okay. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, we are at the end of the interview process. I just want to make sure um, to, and ask whether or not you've got any questions or concerns about working with this council to complete this executive search. Uh, no, I don't, and I, and I wouldn't want to use up any of your time uh, to, to ask that question. But I would ask the question, is there anything, any reservation or any concern that anyone there uh, has that I haven't addressed? Uh, and if this isn't a good time to do it, um, I'm more than happy to take a call from anyone there uh, during the day or during the evening. It's for convenience. Okay, we appreciate okay. that. Thank um, you very much for your time. Thank you for, for participating in this process. My pleasure. And Bye we, now. And we will get back with you by the end of the week. All right. Well, obviously, the sooner uh, you make a decision, the sooner we can, we can start. Okay. Thank you. All right. Very good. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> One more. These folks are in Texas, and hopefully, any questions, is it okay if we go? Mm -hmm. I believe that this contact person is in Ohio. It's going to be in Ohio, this person that we're calling? Does she indicate on your cell phone or work phone? Did she? I would use her cell phone. Use her cell phone. This is Waters Consulting. depending upon the responses you give. Okay. The process should take about 15 minutes, so please try to be concise with your responses. Okay. Um, are you going to be the person who will be assigned to this account? Yes. You will be. Okay. And you will be the per person that's going to take part in this entire interview? Yes. Okay. First question. Describe your ability to complete this project on time within the 100 to 120 days and how you would handle the situation if the project falls behind? Um, I'm one of those, um, we have a you know, good record of finishing and um, setting things up so that things can be finished on time. From the time we uh, start the process, um, I end up being, uh, you, know, you know, you and I would become best friends with us. And, um, you know, as I give you marketing materials, as we, you know, get sign in, you know, as we get uh, buy-in on approval on the marketing materials, uh, we keep the time frame going. It behooves your organization and ours. We keep the candidates involved, engaged. We don't lose them to other candidates. In addition, um, it's more cost-effective for our organization to finish things. So, you know, through status reports, through calls, through troubleshooting, we uh, push to keep it to the uh, a lot of time. Okay. 
Thank you. And it's Robin Beltramini here, and I know that uh, you are in process right now, and I think you're the lead investigator for the Grand Rapids search. Right, I am. Um, how, how will that impact the 120 days? That's a bigger search than ours. Um, but you're at different stages of it. Um, we're almost at the closing point or the first review point for Grand Rapids. So, you know, we stagger, you know, we try to stagger the searches so that not, we're not beginning searches at the same time. And actually, it may be a good thing because there may be people who are, are interested in Grand Rapids that also might be interested in Troy that, you know, may not make the cut or may have more interest in Troy, so that could be a good thing with me already having, um, you know, strong candidates in Michigan already. Okay, thank you. Um, what successful searches have you completed within Michigan within the last, say, four years? Um, four years? Right now, and in the midst of uh, Bay City, we had to restart it because the candidate didn't, um, wasn't successful. Um, with Ann Arbor, I've done a few. I did their city attorney, their financial services administrator. Those are the only two that I've done in Michigan in recent years. Any private sector searches? Uh, no, we typically don't do private sector searches. I, um, I did nonprofit the uh, Workforce Development Corporation in um, Northwest Illinois, but that would be uh, only one that was in public sector. Thank you. Andrea, uh, my name is Christina Broomfield. My question to you would be, how would you handle candidates that apply outside your recruiting process? In other words, if we have some in-house individuals that want to uh, apply for this position, what's your policy? They apply through us and we keep them in the loop, we treat them with respect, but we um, we get them to apply through us. They go through the, you know, similar scrutiny. The only difference may occur, um, we do, and we would ask you as a client to ask to see how you want to handle the referencing process. Uh, if a person makes it to the final phase, we would typically, for external people, we would always do references. If a person then would just be in Troy for a number of years, most of their references would be within the city of Troy. And um, it can be sticky if they don't get the position, they can have some concerns or um, hurt feelings that might be, might be reflected with some of the people that provided references. So that's the only potential difference in the way we treat candidates who are internal versus external. Yeah, just to follow up, if we request that they do not apply for you, do you accept that? And that we just do that process ourselves? We would accept it, um, but it would it could be problematic uh, for the other candidates, and it might um, affect other candidates' participation in the search. What process do you use to qualify the candidates? Uh, we start the search by discussion with your organization, and you know, past the job description, what, what you really want to see in the city, in the next city manager. We talk through the strengths and weaknesses of the, you know, task person, the challenges that the city's facing, and once we come up with the spec and get your approval on it, that's what we use to as a basis. Um, and I, you know, we share with you the list of all candidates that apply to us. But we do, you know, I visually look at every resume and I'll cut down the list, you know, say if 50 people applied, I would typically um, take about 20 and um, ask for more information, share 
the list of all the candidates that applied in addition to that list and of their resumes and questionnaires and get your uh, input in um, moving people to the next level. Uh, moving them to the next level, um, I'll have an interview, get more uh, detailed information on them, tell you the strengths and weaknesses, again, based on your impressions from before plus our original spec and work with you to narrow it to the final five. We uh, do references. In the referencing process, we, we attempt to do a uh, 360. We get people they work for, people that have worked for them, plus their peers in the industry. They go through a management assessment test which talks through some of their strengths and weaknesses as a manager. And then, of course, um, we do background checks. You know, we verify degrees, do credit criminal civil um, checks to um, make sure that, you know, they're well vetted in the process. Okay. And then one follow-up. Do you typically interview people outside of the references provided by a candidate? We typically do, and it depends on the, it, it depends on the scenario. First of all, we ask people, um, for a city manager search, we ask people to give us certain references. We ask for, you know, the head of uh, their council. We ask for heads of the uh, union uh, and other uh, key people. If we, because of the public sector and issues pop up, we uh, try to either through the discussions we have with other references or some concerns that we see based on media, we will you know select other entities to follow up with. Okay. How often do you plan to make face-to-face -face visits with this council and explain that mm -hmm. process? I'm sorry. How often do you plan to make face-to-face -face visits with the council? during this process, and can you explain what you'll be doing at those meetings? Sure. Um, I come initially to meet with each, you know, each of you to uh, come up with the initial spec, you know, uh, then I'll, you know, share the draft brochure and uh, marketing materials with you. Um, and sharing that with you, all the rest of that will be done electronically. Um, for the selection of the semi-finalists, because of the proximity, you know, I'll be doing that, um, you know, in person also. I'll send you the materials ahead of time so that you can, um, you know, I could, uh, we could have a open discussion about the strengths and weaknesses of those that have, you know, applied and those that have uh, I selected as far as people to have follow up through. And then um, when we have discussion of the uh, narrowing of the list from say, you know, the 10 or 15 semifinals to five, I typically do do that uh, by, um, by telephone. If you prefer, we can do something else, but you know, I typically do that with by telephone. And then I come for the final process to help facilitate um, the final interviews and help to come to a conclusion of the strengths and weaknesses from your impressions of the final. So, you know, that's three times you see me. Okay. Uh, could you tell me what happens if the City Council is, is not satisfied with any of the candidates as a result of your search? Um, then we would have to redo it until you're satisfied. Uh, you wouldn't pay any additional professional fees. You would be responsible for the additional expenses. Typically, what is the most difficult part of the recruitment process, and how are those issues resolved? Um, getting a handle on what a person really wants to see, you know, we can come up with materials for the marketing materials, but when you get into the discussion, when you get a chance to see real candidates, um, you know, people really typically want diversity, but diversity means, means different things. Um, you know, you have, you can have diversity of people who 
uh, will, you know, this would be their first city manager role. You can count uh, candidates who this would be their last city manager role. They might bring, you know, 30 years of experience, which could be, a, you know, a wonderful stress because of the depth of their, their experience and exposure. But, you know, if you're looking for, um, you know, someone who's going to be in the organization a long time, you know, those are typically the challenges. But, you know, trying to weigh which is the most important piece. Okay. So this, you know, is personality driven. It's, um, you know, individuals have different things that they see as key pieces. You know, the economic, you know, dealing with economic financial issues is a key critical issue across the country, but especially for the state of Michigan. Okay. Um, is your firm willing to negotiate a best and final offer as it relates to project expenses, the reimbursables? Um, we we will work with you, yes, if there are expenses that you would choose not to, for us to incur, you know, we would work with you on that. I mean, certain things, you know, I know to do, um, because of the, uh, the gas prices and the mileage reimbursements now, it's actually cheaper for uh, us to rent cars and come to your site then for me to use my car, you know, things like that. You know, we don't, you know, stay at Hyatt when we come to your organization. If you have a, you know, municipal rate with a hotel, we hope to use that. If not, we use a, re you know, we go with, uh, with, you know, our travel agent is very good at, you know, getting uh, a reasonable and safe hotel for uh, our visits. Okay. Thank you really concludes the interview process. Um, I just need to ask you whether or not you have any questions or concerns about working with this council to complete the executive search. Um, no, I don't. I just have a question on the number of people that you've had discussions with tonight and when you expect to make a decision. Sure. Um, there were six people in the, that are in the process. All six were interviewed tonight. And we hope that we can render a decision and call everyone back by the end of the week, one way or the other. Great. Okay. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you again for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And if you come up with any additional questions, please feel free to give me a call. It's not all week. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay, folks. Okay. okay. Now, our next step is to give you the green sheets. Yes. And the white sheets and any yes. changes that we made, any yes. changes on those? Right. So just make sure that your score across from the question is from 1 to 10 and oh. that the um, evaluation forms have got the corresponding numbers, either 24s. Actually, that's all you have to fill. Out of the no, three, four. An interview is four points. Well, you're not going to calculate that. That's going to come when I calculate right. when I tally these. Okay. Okay. So you're just concerned about the other three, three areas where there's 24 points allotted. So we'll make sure oh, okay. your ratings fall within the zero to 24 number. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a few minutes to. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Take okay. a few minutes to finish and. Check. You saw me check there were some things that, you know, they all said pretty much the same thing, so they all got with them. Yeah. And two points, two on points several. of each other, yeah. Absolutely. wide enough to do that. <laughs> do we assign points to the money or are you doing that? I, yeah, just so that I can explain that because I have explained it to a few of you. I have made that calculation already 
what I've done is taken the base proposals for all the search firms, not added in any of the reimbursables or anything like that because they're all too varied. That is something we're going to take up in a best and final offer situation. So I've taken the base proposals and paired those against each other in every case. Yes. So for the one that was 30%, did you take the center line? Actually, or the Peggy used the lowest denomination okay. in that case. Right. But I have a question about the one that was 30%. There were also contingency. Did that figure in at all? Because it's kind of like, you know, they're high, which I think 30%, but then the contingency piece would be that if they didn't find anybody, they wouldn't get paid. True. And, and I don't know if that, I think that's kind of the glean that we got from everybody. If they didn't find you, somebody from that would pay. Oh, be. even, no, even we the firms where you pay up front? No. Well, okay. There no, we pay. We have to pay a fee whether they find someone or not. Except or in that one case. And, and the league, the league was prorated if you only paid for what they did. Right. If you found somebody else or went with somebody else, right. you only paid their actual costs right. for what they did. But there were two for mm -hmm. cost. One was straight contingency. If you didn't find it, that then. was deacon. Right. And then there was another one that was 30% by the contingency that if they didn't find it, there was no cost of expenses. And all his fees were in. So if we don't subtract out the fees, well, that's where you're Well, that's, the problem. The that's where the problem is. Yeah. yeah. That's why should we point them. The thing of it is that you can take those types of things into consideration with the other numbers so that you can. So you, so you figure the numbers on their fee. And then when it comes back to us, we can leave. You can. We yes, can absolutely. All right. Exactly. We have to point out with Smith, however, the only fee that was included in there, in that 30%, was advertising. Based on the other reports, advertising was maybe three four hundred dollars four months for The other expenses would still be Okay. I didn't have some. I didn't put anything in here because I've got it on the screen. Correct. That's right. Well, I'd like to hold this together. Are we set to send, Madam Mayor? If you want me to make this calculation tonight, that's the plan. That's the plan, correct? Okay. Thank you. Are you recessing for a few minutes? Only if someone will take my headache. <laughs> Will we have, there, will we have to move back in there? Oh, I'm just like, shh. No, I've got some of the I won't go in there. That's no. Did you? Awful.
Um, could, I'm going to move that we postpone the um, vote on the E4 until we have the tabulation. Support. Live later in the meeting because yeah. we can't vote on it until we get it. Okay. Moved by the chair, seconded by Councilman Kerwin, that we postpone the voting on E4 until we get the tabulation. Discussion? The vote, Mr. Bartholomew? Council Member Broomfield? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Swimming? Yes. Yes. What? Yes. Wait, wait. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Yes. That's what happens when you got a mic you can't hear. Madam Mayor. Councilman Kerwin. Should we move to uh, extend the meeting? It's so midnight. No, we go to midnight. No, oh, midnight. okay. Well, I only go to 11. All right. Uh, does it... Uh, we got to go back to the rest of the E items. Um, the, would I move the mayoral appointments as printed? Support. Discussion? I move by the chair, seconded by Councilman Kerman. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Beth Almeo? Council Member Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Here. Yes. 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 Mayor, I will move the uh, appointments as printed on the agenda. Support. Moved by Councilman Howerlack, seconded by Councilwoman Bill Termini that we approve the City Council appointments as printed on the agenda. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Brathamio? Councilman Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilman Fleming? Yes. Broomfield? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, could we have city council nominations next week? We're meeting next week, so going through all these, please. Uh, Mayor. Uh, Mayor for Tom Howard. It, it'll only take a minute, and I kind of um, outlined the uh, agenda to these folks. And um, to put, and most of them are reappointments. Betty Coven, Coven to the uh, Advisory Committee for Senior Citizens. Mary Ann Bernardi to the Charter Revision Committee. Daniel Bliss to the Charter Revision Committee. William Weisgerber, who would be new to the Charter Revision Committee. Sharon McDowell, Dan, Mc, Donald. McDonald, thank you. To the Ethnic Issues Advisory Board and Paul Lynn, Historic District Commission. Moved by Councilman Hall, Second. seconded by Councilman Beltramini that we forward those names as indicated. Discussion? Vote, Mrs. Bartholomew. Councilman Howard left? Yes. Sterling? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilor Bill Yes. Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Motion passes. Um, consent agenda. Does anyone on council have any items they want exempted? Yes, ma'am. Which one? Uh, F4. It's the patching. F4. Is it A and C? <laughs> Asphalt or concrete? A and C. Okay. Both the asphalt, the hot right. and cold. Would someone move the resolution with the exception? Madam Mayor, resolve that all items as presented on the consent agenda are hereby approved as presented with the exceptions of item, is it F4, A and C? Yes. Which shall be considered after consent agenda items. Supported. Moved by Councilwoman Kerwin, seconded by Councilman Fleming that we approve. All the consent agenda items with the exception of F4 AC, which we'll take after this vote. Discussion? Mayor. Vote, uh, Councilman Eisenbacher. I also wanted to get an answer on F6, if we could. F6, and including F6. Please. Okay, the vote, Mrs. Bartholomew. Councilman Kerwin? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilor Bill Yes. 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 Motion passes. Um, F 
A and C, Council and Beltman. I wanted to ask Mr. Murphy, evidently. Um, we bid on cold patch and hot patch regularly. How close are we to buying our own patch truck? Like Southfield has two of them, and they don't have patches popped because it dries out the hole and does it right. And I know that Mr. Richneck's been looking into that. How, how much money are we going to literally throw in the holes before we do it right? Um, I'll have to check with Mr. Richneck uh, with regard to um, an answer to your specific question yeah. as to um, getting that piece of equipment in line and, and, and the like. Um, I can tell you that uh, Southfield's Rose Aren't they're not all well patched I give you, you that <laughs> um, so I don't want to tell you that that's a perfect solution now you know anything where we can spend more time uh, patching the roads or doing more appropriate repairs would, would definitely uh, benefit us you have to also understand at the same time we have seen a reduction of 18 percent in our staff and yet we still have the potholes that we do need to fill so um, that there are some different things that do need to be weighed, but you, you bring up some very good questions, and I'll have to find out an answer. To well, them. and that's kind of where I was. I mean, and, and I understand. Our staff does a better job, quite honestly, in the county. I don't know how many times I see the road commission throwing cold patch over a puddle, and it's not going to do the job. So, and those are my tax dollars, too. So if we can do some of this one time right, even if the equipment costs us more in the long, in the short run, I'm all for it. So with with that understanding, I wanted to use the opportunity to raise the question. With that under, understanding that we will get more information relatively soon, I would move F4 A and C for approval. Support. Moved by Councilman Beltramini, seconded by Councilman Kerwin that we approve item F4 A and C. Discussion, Councilman Eisbacher. Um, yeah, I've also observed um, non-Troy road patching occur into ice-filled holes. Yeah. Um, and it's my understanding that this equipment for the semi-automated patching reduces your labor requirements. Is that mm -hmm. true? W well, I, I want to take a look at uh, all of the different okay. circumstances. I, I, I want, want to talk with Tim Richneck more before I answer that question. May okay. Councilman Carlo? I, I was able to attend that one morning section at SEMCOG, and I'm, I'm glad that um, Councilmember Beltramini actually brought this up because Southfields was featured there as a best practice. I did bring home the books for everyone sitting here about preserving our streets because it's the investment in those that are still good. And mm -hmm. so uh, uh, I share the concern. I'm glad to hear um, that Assistant Manager Murphy will look into this, and then I suggest that you also um, consult with SEMCO. The vote was back on. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilor Belkin Yes. Broomfield? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Harlat? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Motion passes. F6, Councilman Eisenbacher? Yes. Mayor, typically I'd ask this question in my email, but had limited time today. Um, in the memo, it lists a cost of approximately 3.5 million, and then we're only paying. And then it says we're paying. We're paying. We're responsible for paying all of it through the project, but it's only 400,000 is what we're talking in the resolution. Or I mean, 500,000, and then our portion is 102,000. Hmm. Well, the. Um $511,000 is the estimated cost to relocate the AT&T facilities uh, from private easement areas to which we are uh, responsible in that AT&T is not responsible. Mm -hmm. uh, however, 80% of those costs are reimbursable through the federal government. Um, it's an 80-20 project. And so at the end of the day, our 20% portion is $102,311.64. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm looking at page 77 of our packet, the bullet second from the bottom. Oh, the $3.5 Yeah, the estimated cost, what we're talking about here is to, 
important to relocate those utilities that are in the private property that need to be moved. Okay, so those we're not responsible for, only the public property ones? Those which are on private property, we are responsible for. So let me understand. Does that mean that the other almost $3 million worth of relocation is not from private to public land? It's some other kind of land that AT&T is then responsible for? Well, correct. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my arms around how this looks on the street. Are we making them move these closer to the street, or are we taking over what was their private easement? Um, that's a very good question, exactly how it all gets done. And the answer is, in, in many respects, yes. <laughs> um, there, there, there's a large number of uh, utilities that do get relocated, um, and AT&T has a very large chunk of that which needs to be relocated. Um, some of that is going to be within the public right-of-way that does need to be relocated, still within the public right-of-way, just in another place. And some of this is uh, utilities that are in private easements that do need to be relocated. And those that are in private easements is what we have to pay for. Those which are in the public uh, uh, right-of-way and public easements, they are responsible for. Okay. And, and you can thank the Metro Act for that. I'll have you sketch on a napkin to make it clear. Okay. Too. Somebody move F6, please. Uh, so moved, Mayor. Second. Moved by Councilman Eisenbach or seconded by Councilman Beltramini that we approve item F6. Discussion? Vote, Mrs. Bartholomew. Councilman Beltramini? Yes. Broomfield? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Powerlock? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Uh, we have an item on the table we need to deal with, plus we're going to get our tabulation back. Um, then we'll have the vote on, on uh, E4. Um, so do we do it under council comments, this salary item, or do we just bring up a resolution? Mrs. Bloom? Uh, Mayor, I just wanted to indicate, uh, previously in the meeting tonight, you had appointed an acting city manager and based on uh, the Constitution, Article 11, Section 3, um, it says it prohibits uh, any municipality from granting compensation to any public officer, agent, or contractor after the service has been rendered or um, contract has been entered into. So you do need to um, take care of setting that compensation uh, tonight because the effective date of the acting city manager is April 1st, which would be this week prior to uh, our next city council okay. meeting. So this is the uh, Michigan Constitution that requires us to do this. We yes, can sir. set it low and then negotiate a contract. Um, we have a paper in front of us that was provided by the city attorney, in case you want to refer to that. Uh, we can go lower than that. We don't, you know, it's just setting it until we can arrange a contract. Is that right? Uh, we, it's, if it's council's direction for me to negotiate a contract or to have our outside labor council negotiate right. a contract for services, we can certainly do that. It can be done and brought back at the next meeting, but because there is that right. time intervening, you do need to take some action. I can, yeah, we usually have Craig Lang do that, don't we? And mm -hmm. it's a contract. Yeah, okay. Okay, council. Mayor. Councilman Beltman? Mm -hmm. Not me. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mrs. Be Brethana. Because this item is out of order and it should have been suspend. under E3, we should suspend the rules to either discuss it back with E3 now or under council comments, but the suspension of the rules should be handled at this okay. point. Okay. Move that we suspend the rules. Support. To discuss this under E3. Moved by the chair, seconded by Councilman Kerwin, that we suspend the rules to discuss this under I E3. The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew, to suspend. Councilmember Broomfield? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, someone want to 
venture figure to start with? Mayor. Uh, Councilman Eisenberger? I did briefly discuss this, and obviously a one-on-one -on -one conversation um, with uh, Mr. Zerleg is um, unfortunately not privy to everyone here. Um, but he did express to me he was interested in an hourly rate um, because he's not in need of um, the other benefits. And if we had it like 80 hours every two weeks, that gives him flexibility for... Well, all we're doing is just setting an just hourly for rate for now just until we negotiate rate? a okay. contract. Yeah. Okay, good. We don't need it. I don't want, yeah, there's not enough information for everyone for details. Well, we don't do that anyway. The attorneys do it, and then it comes mm -hmm. to us. Councilman Broomfield. Mayor, um, put forward a resolution uh, that uh, we would uh, pay, let's see, uh, resolve the Detroit City Council, Council. Well, we have the, you know, you pointed to that. We hereby appoint John Zerlike as acting city manager effective April 1st, 2009. Um, and until the next scheduled city council meeting, uh, Mr. Zerlag would be compensated by an hourly contractual basis, uh, not to exceed 40 hours a week, um, based on a salary of uh, our previous city attorney, which was... Uh, city manager. I'm sorry, city manager, I'm tired too, which uh, uh, turns out to be $68 an hour until a contract is negotiated and approved by City Council. Second. 16. Moved by Councilwoman Broomfield, seconded by Council, uh, Councilwoman Beltramini that we approve the resolution as indicated. A vote, Mrs. Bartholomew. Councilmember Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howard Yes. Kerwin? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Broomfield? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, we'll have to take council comments now and then come back to the uh, before when we got it. Okay, uh, Councilwoman Beltramini, you said you had some things to bring up under council comments? No, no, I said I would not hold the uh, meeting to do it. I'll play, do that next week. All right, anybody have something? Um, councilwoman? A couple Kerwin. things. Uh, many of us were able to attend a very successful fundraiser for Troy People Concerned. I'd like um, to Command Martin Howerleck, who sits on the board, um, and every all the other board members for putting on a great event. Yeah, for the people who missed it this year, please make sure to come back next year. It's got an excellent silent and live auction. I see we have some attendees in the room and they're nodding. Uh, I was sold out. And it was really a good venue, so it was a nice opportunity to see people, and it's such a good cause. Um, uh, sitting before us tonight, we have the Troy Community Guide which is printed at no cost to the city, thanks to our uh, creative uh, uh, community affairs director. Uh, you can see that it's filled with wonderful advertisements and great coupons, and that's how this uh, wonderful services directory is made available. Um, copies can be picked up right here uh, in City Hall and also at the library. Anybody else have any other items? Do we? Do we? We don't Madam know how long it's going to take. Yes, uh, Council Beltrami. If if you need somebody to take up time, I I will say the the expense reports from Councilwoman Kerwin and I are in this agenda packet, so the world knows we went. And one of the things that the league talked about in Lansing were the various issues that are put before the legislature for approval. And I really want to give a shout out to our very own Senator, John Papageorge, because when this year's budget was originally presented by the governor and discussed in Senate committee, it came without the language that has been inserted in the last two budgets that left revenue sharing whole to whatever our corpus balance was last year and as cities are 
losing property taxes and this is a property tax dependent state we still expect as residents of businesses for our cities to be safe and our schools to be sound and our services to be provided and our roads to be patched um, and Senator Papa George reinserted that language last week for us so I really want to thank him for that he had mentioned that, and I was glad he was able to do that because, you know, we're in... It makes a big difference. Tight times. Uh, Councilman Carlin? Well, speaking of Senator Papa George, I know that he um, recently brought out legislative language again uh, to make it possible for the pavilions um, to benefit from help from the state of Michigan. I'm wondering if perhaps we can hear any updates on what's going on with the pavilions at this time. I don't know that we have any additional information yet. Mr. Murphy, do we have anything else coming out other than they're still working on it? There's no news at this point. Okay. Uh, did you want to talk about the um, large amount of money that Troy is getting under the, the bring it with me here the uh, energy efficiency funds yeah it's the energy efficiency community development uh, block grant well it's not community development sorry development block grant it's uh, not through HUD it's through the energy departments uh, the city of Troy has been uh, awarded nine hundred and twenty thousand dollars give or take a thousand um, for um, energy efficiency related uh, work. Um, there are a series of six steps that we have to go through before we can actually obligate those funds. Um, uh, John uh, Lamarado and I spoke with our staffs today on uh, the process uh, that needs to go forward for us to be able to obligate those funds. Okay. And could I ask, uh, is there any more information about the rain barrel project? Uh, no, there's no news on uh, the rain barrel uh, project necessarily at this time. So folks that want to do that within Troy would just do their own through, you know, the other avenues that are available for getting rain barrels. Okay. It's a very effective way to uh, right. control My storm water and uh, also capture it and reuse it on your property. Yeah. My son just installed two of them on their house in Sterling Heights. And uh, so I told him, you know, we had had some discussion about whether we were going to have them available here in the project. And uh, he says, well, if they don't, Mom, I know where to get them for you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good thing. So, and then we look forward to hearing more about the film industry and the things that are going to happen. Someone's mentioning that things are going to happen within Troy, but we don't have the particulars on it yet, so. Well, there is um, another company that is going to be based here in Troy. If they're doing an HBO, uh, HBO film, they're staying at the Marriott and they're using the Ford Neural Building as their uh, base of operations. The filming will take place in West Bloomfield and in Hamtramck. There isn't any filming taking on in Troy, but of course, um, they're located here. So that's uh, good for our uh, local businesses. Mm -hmm. That's good. And uh, not yet? Okay. Uh, Steve uh, Kowalski from the Eccentric told me that uh, there's going to be a um, pep rally at the Troy Somerset Inn and Tom Izzo will be in town for it. On uh, the, well, the Somerset Inn is the base hotel for the, uh, for the Spartans and I knew you wanted me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, the Somerset Inn will be the base uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the Spartans um, for right. the uh, Final Four. Yeah, and I'm sure there'll be more publicity on that. And everybody, be sure you wear your green. Any green thoughts? Okay. Any other items? We're not. Are we, Mrs. Sears? Are we getting close? Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how long I'm sticking in here. Um, Susan's tabulating the results. I've tabulated the interview scores, and they're being inputted now. She'll bring them up as soon as they're ready. Okay. Thank you. We're sorry to have you talk when you when you can't talk. All right. Anybody else have anything? You want to take another break and come back in? Yeah. 
I take a break until she comes back. What, 10 minutes, 15?
back from our extended recess. Um, and we have the information provided us in this final scoring with some added information on the uh, accompanying sheets. Questions, comments? There. Councilman Eisbacher. I was just going through the costs, the cost column. Um, unfortunately, I turned in my notes with my sheet. But we had spoken about the Smith Recruiting Group and how they were different because they were a percentage, purely a percentage, and only if they found a person. And I thought we discussed that they'd be the same as the lowest price one. Ms. Yeah, um, if I can address that question. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was the lowest price in the pay scale for a city manager is what um, Peggy took as the analysis number. So I think the pay scale goes from 110 to something. I don't remember what the range was, but she took the 110 and used that as the 30%. That's what happened in that case. And that, that was the company that had never done a city manager search. I believe that's correct, yes. So they didn't have the comparable numbers. Anybody else have a question? Are you looking for resolution, Madam Mayor? Uh, I don't know if people are ready for a resolution or not. That's why I was holding off. Mayor? Uh, Councilwoman Brisco? I, I guess what I, I still don't understand, and I, I don't know how you can equate this, but we've been up here talking a lot about cost, and there were two companies that worked on contingency only, which m basically meant no cost if they didn't uh, find somebody and we went in-house. Um, I don't know how that was figured in, other than I know one company was a contingency with 19,000, I think was their fee. So you would have figured the 19 in as their fee, but if they didn't find anybody, there would be no cost. It's, it's like a no risk. How was that compensated? No, it was not um, taken into consideration as far as the analysis and the price. It was not. Councilwoman Beltran. Back to Christina's point, I think it was David's as well. And I guess I, at first I, I kind of understood Councilwoman Greenfield's concern, but when, when we're doing these forms, I guess the bottom line is we expect them to be successful. Right. If we're going to use them, we expect them to be successful. So what is the minimum we would have to pay them if they were successful? Right. Yeah, because they're all assuming they're going to be successful. Right. Well, they wouldn't be doing it. Right. Backer? The other thing that concerns me is we, we well, wanted... Well, wait, get oh. talk in the mic because they won't hear you down there. Oh. Um, the other thing that concerned me was the one criteria that we had where we wanted to have private sector and public sector some experience in both. And a couple of these firms didn't have any of the of the public sector and a couple of them didn't have any of the private sector. Oh, reverse. 
late. Um, and it's sort of like the 120 days where you got to be able to meet the 120 days, which all of them said they are, but I'm concerned, I mean, openly, that the Mich Michigan Municipal League, all they do is the public sector, city and township, county searches. Madam Mayor. Uh, was that Council on Curling? Yes. <clears throat> in response to that, I think that's kind of a plus because if there's a if there is any association in the state that's aware of what's going on, who's available, uh, it would be MML. So when you're in a short crunch like that, to know who is up, who's available, who's around, um, an understanding of how people have served. And I certainly think that came across in the interview, especially someone who had had 20 years of experience in Royal Oak. Um, a good understanding of the area, a good understanding of the laws. But I think the numbers speak for themselves. That was the lowest cost and the one with the most experience. Councilman Brookfield? Uh, and the question I had, uh, was the interview numbers, points figured in here? I didn't. Were the interview points figured in here? Well, that was just four, four points anyway. There's nothing. There's nothing showing. Anybody have a question? I uh, think we're going to have to extend the meeting. Uh, I move to extend the meeting till 12.15. Anybody second? We've only got five second, minutes. Second. Okay. Moved by the chair, seconded by Councilman Fleming. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew, to extend at 12.15. Better be done. Councilman Fleming? Yes. Howard I? Yes. Kerwin? No. Mayor Shelley? Yes. Councilman Belcher Meeting? Yes. Broomfield? Uh, yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Oh, it passes. I don't want to extend it either, but we've got to get this done. Uh, Mayor? Uh, Councilman Broomfield? I, I just want to make sure I'm reading this right. I'm looking at the, um, let me look at the cost, the figure that this is cost to complete project. And then you have that formula down there at the bottom, kind of in the grade area. And then something is starred, and the assumption is that that's the 24 points assigned. Right. That's that's my multiplier multiplied by 24. Yeah, and then you can, okay. The yeah. question I guess I have is uh, one of the companies, CPS. Yeah. According to my worksheet here, they have a, a, a about a fifty-six thousand dollar fee, and they've gotten the full 24 points. Zero. C CPS. Am I, am I reading no, that right? They got zero. They, they received no points, no. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. So 24 is the total, but then I over, went too far over. All right. Yeah. I think that. Okay. All right. All right. And I apologize okay. that I don't have a score for each one of the little boxes at the top. The formula just calculated the total at the bottom and divided your scores by seven for an average. Is that the 
the same program we use for bids? For all the city bids, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I assume that's what it was. But yes, the same process that we use for yeah. bids. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's been working all these years. So. <laughs> it's been working all these years, yeah. It's interesting. I think that each of us has read these proposals no less than three times in preparation for tonight's meeting. And when, as we sit here with this chart in front of us, trying to review the top two or three and see where the differences or the similarities might be, I'm wondering if it's all worth it. Um, and, and I say that in all honesty because we, we can advertise this position ourselves. We lose one qualified candidate the minute we hire one of these firms. And if it's that difficult after this very meticulous process, are we going to get our money's worth from anybody in today's budget world? So I, I throw that out in the for what it's worth. Um, it seems like we're maybe overthinking it. The, the only problem is if we advertise ourselves, then it means 
And we go, we'd have to go through all the steps that the oh, I, firms I, would have to go through. I understand all and of that. And I don't know that we could do that. Um, we can't have a subcommittee. Uh, no. We're not allowed. It must be the, the total body. Um, Mayor. Councilman Eisbacher. My experience with professional recruiters is that their really big value added is that they'll bring in people who aren't looking. Um, bringing in a person who meets all of our expectations is easy if they happen to read your ad and they apply. It's not easy if you're not naturally drawing these people in. And networking, just networking and networking and networking is what, I, what we are paying for. Um, talking to literally hundreds if not thousands of people, getting their feedback, finding out who's available, finding out their strengths and weaknesses without with a completely independent uh, view, just looking at what our requirements are. That's what we're paying for. Um, and I think that networking is something that, that's very valuable. Mayor. Councilwoman Brumfeld. Well, listening to what Councilwoman Beltramini shared and the issue of the money, um, and we've interviewed these firms. I, I, I'm struggling with the fact that the top two have no experience in private, but surely they have lots of experience with the, I'm sorry, yeah, pro, no experience with private, lots and lots, I mean, nothing but experience with public. But we don't have that mix there. Um, can our HR department do something like this? I mean, we can't put together a subcommittee, but can't, I, you know, I sat and I listened to the process from all these different companies, and they were very, very similar. And I would argue that if anybody knows what seven different people want, it may very well be the very people that work for us. I don't know. I, I'm just throwing that out. Do you want somebody to reply to yes. this? Yes, sure. She can't speak, though. It's probably a good thing she can't speak. Could we? We probably could. With the degree of expertise that these firms have at that level, probably not. My concern would be the adequacy of staff. I, I, won't, ha I won't have the... Um, staff capability given other issues that are going on in the department right now with 120, <coughs> excuse me, the 120 day time frame. <coughs> the reason I say that is we will have at least potentially two sets of negotiations. We have a new union coming in. Well, those those you, those are already ongoing things that you have to do <coughs> on, and then to add this on to it with the number of staff you have, it wouldn't be a feasible time frame. I mean, we could certainly try it. It would be very difficult. Yeah. Okay. Other comments or questions? <coughs> Uh, Councilman Eisenbacher? Like uh, Councilwoman Beltramini said, I've looked through these several times, and I'm still looking through them in light of our evaluations. Um, the highest ranked firm that has both private and public sector experience was the third one, Charles Blockett. 
the 76 was very close to the, obviously next to the 77 of the Waters Consulting Group, um, which were both behind Michigan, Michigan Municipal League at 83%. can't remember from my notes now because everything was blush blending together. Did we have the, <clears throat> was it Charles Blockett? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he was the first one we did and he's the one yep. that said most of his was state employees. Mm -hmm. And non-profits. And non-profits. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if we consider the <coughs> criteria to have experience in both areas, and experience in both areas, meaning you have contacts in both areas, He'd be the highest ranked one with both experience. I don't know if we want to consider the top three more closely. Mayor? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, how are I? The other thing, too, is, is I'm not even sure that um, the price, the price um, calculation has a tremendous swing to a lot of these. And to be honest with you personally, I'm looking at the number right above it, which is kind of a normalized number. And um, I'm happy to see that, uh, you know, there were uh, the top three were pretty close. Uh, you have 59, 57, and 55, or 50, you know, yeah, roughly. And um, price-wise, they also happen to, happen to be pretty close, too. It's difficult to ascertain price, too, when you have some that include mileage and some that don't. Mm -hmm. They're, Essentially, the top three are the same price for all intents and purposes, plus or minus a few hundred dollars. So I just wanted to add that to the conversation and certainly echo Councilman Eisenbacher's words about Mr. Blockett having some um, um, experience in, in more diverse fields. Um, the thing to take into consideration, too, is his team has um, extensive experience in and evaluation processes, especially with his experience at the state and uh, some of the folks that are on his um, um, proposal as well. I think that is certainly um, an asset to him. And speaking of the cost, there's, uh, you know, there was their base cost that they were going to charge, but then there were all the other costs that were added in because remember last time that it started at 20000 but by the time everything was all paid for and we ended up, it was more like 30000 Because I asked to, make, to uh, make sure about that. So we can't assume that we're only going to pay the lowest amount that they suggested for their professional fee because we do have those other costs that are in there. Mm -hmm. They've expressed it in different ways. And uh, even on the phone, you know, when we were interviewing, they were saying that. Mayor? I think, yeah, I think I recall most of the ones on the interviews did say that the reimbursements were, would be somewhat negotiable, if my memory serves me. I think those, because I don't have that sheet in front of me, but I think most of them did say that that was something that would, could be negotiated. Yeah, they did say it would be negotiated, but they didn't say it would be no cost at all. And all no, I was no, no, cautioning of how, how much, uh, you know, added on last time. I was, I was just giving a reference figure just so, you know. Councilman Fleming? Just very little difference between the top three. I mean, the, the cost just swings it, you know, but it's just, without that, there's just very little difference. Madam Mayor. Uh, Councilman Beltrami. The other thing is, the CBA charges approximately $500 for yes. each background check. Right. And they do a background check of each finalist. Most of the others did a background check before the offer so that you didn't have any surprises. Which, and I'm not sure, you know, one is better than the other, but mm -hmm. keep in mind, if you're going to interview five or six, as we did, that's $2,500 or $3,000 with 
eighty percent of it is a sunk cost that you're never going to see. Right. Yeah, that's why I mentioned about our cost last time. And he also charges for the duplicating and delivering of the notebooks. Mm -hmm. No one else did. Right. Who did? Block it. Block it. It's twenty-one to start before the five hundred dollar background checks. Five hundred for each one. Yes. Yeah. As opposed uh, to the seventeen thousand. Right. Uh, which is real money in an economy like this. It's per finals. Hmm? Per, per finals, yeah. Yes, because remember the one example, uh, there were 64, 61 applicants and eight finalists, and then they interviewed three. Right. That was just one that I'm just remembering here. Uh, so there could be a sizable number. Don't I remember, Madam Mayor, that he did say that was negotiable, but the Michigan Municipal League, as I recall, said that their district expenses were not negotiable. He was the one, they were the one that said they were the, not. They were pretty set, yes. They were set, they yeah. Were, Michigan yeah. Municipal League, they had it pretty well yeah, delineated there. Yeah. Some of them didn't yeah. delineate. They, they were confident that they were the lowest, is what they said, yeah. which is true. Right. Well, folks, we have one minute, or we have to extend the meeting again. <laughs> well, we always have to finish that, and we're working on it. Right. The time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, but we don't want it to go too much longer. No. Councilman Eisenbacher, I thought I heard a sound. Yes. <laughs> um, one of our council members is president of the MML. Pardon? One of our council members is president of the MML currently. I'm curious if she could share any positive and negative that she's heard from the other communities regarding use of the MML for search. And, and she did indicate she had no uh, no content, no. yeah. No, uh, but I do know, uh, David's right. I do know communities right. that have used them. And the one thing that the communities have consistently said is because, by and large, these searches are run by people with extensive experience in upper management of city governments, that Choosing the profile, when, when we described our profile process that we went through with Mercer three years ago and what the MML does, and, and Tom Dorsey, a great guy and a former city manager, but even with that, the corporate process was a little more difficult than the one that, as I understand it, the league uses, but those are individualized searches too. So. Frank Gerstenecker may do a different one than Bill Baldrige, who may do a different one than Kurt Kimball, or, you know, depending upon who your investigators were. Um, Bill Baldrige is, as Mary said, familiar with Southeast Michigan, has extensive experience, and he's got an enormous network. And the other thing is, those guys deal with vendors, so they know private sector people who know public government as well. So I think that I would say that we would get a thorough search, we would get a cooperative search. <coughs> and the accessibility would be worked out with whoever our lead investigator was. Oh, yeah, they said we get to choose. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, and I think they probably put Bill on the phone call because he has 
probably the best knowledge right now of not only this market, but who's on the market or who might be willing to move. And with that ICMA experience, he's got some national exposure as well, as far as the network. Madam Mayor. Councilman Kerwin. Thanks. And I think the advantage in someone like Bill is that um, for those steps that you saw in the other firms where they said, well, we'll, we'll figure out what the city's like, we'll make a brochure, and we have some samples of the brochure, we're, we're all over that. I mean, they know that our website really says a lot. So we can get to attracting people right away rather than formatting what we need to do to attract as a city. That's pretty much laid out for us. So the sooner we can get to that next step, uh, the better off we are in our 120-day countdown. Mayor? Uh, Mayor Patem, how are they? The, the thing I'm curious about in, in reviewing the list of cities that the MML has listed here, one of the largest one on their list is Grand Rapids, and yet Grand Rapids is using the Waters Group this year. I'm curious, because to me that doesn't speak necessarily to a resounding recommendation if they went out the next time and used a completely different search firm. Maybe they're required to rotate the, uh, the companies. I mean, they can't use the same one. I don't know. No, I'm not making a judgment know. one way or another. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm not I'm just curious, that's all. I mean, I was yeah. skimming through here. And, and when I talked to Mayor Hartwell, quite honestly, Martin, I didn't ask him that question, and I, it should have triggered. But he did say that this time they made a point to want to make a national search. Um, and he felt that they would get that better from Water Saldani, uh, and that's who ultimately got the contract. They have, within the last, I think, year and a half, they've hired a new city attorney and another senior staffer, and that may have been what they used the league for. I don't know. I, I neglected to ask him that question. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I, I didn't. Yeah, I, you know, the, the one thing about Waters for sure is, I mean, if you, um, if you go out of state and you pick up some other state's publication or you read the National League of Cities or you do an internet, they're everywhere. I mean, they are everywhere. Um, and they, they must have a tremendous workload that they do because it, it just seems like I'm always running in to, uh, to them. I always see Andrea Battle Sims listed as a contact somewhere. Um, I mean, certainly that's an asset to them, too. I mean, I do think that there are, there are certain specialties that each have. Obviously, the MML is going to be good in Michigan and probably some of the surrounding states, too. Um, uh, the um, Mr. Uh, Blockett, it seemed like he had a, uh, a certain specialty, too, that kind of lopped over to the nonprofit and special kind of airport district and, and quasi-governmental entities as well. And of course, Waters is good on a national scale. scale. Um, so, my concern is, I, I, is something that is important to me goes beyond the scope of what MML can offer. And that, that's where some of my concern is. It, there m might be a, a good city manager in, in, in one of these other communities, and they might be perfectly happy with it. But what I'm looking for, and one of the, and, we each have things that, that you honestly can't plug into this formula. But it is important to me to have, and I said this last time, I guess, too, but to also have the diversity that, that either um, Lockett or Waters offers, uh, both geographic and also entity diversity. And I think that the pool of candidates is going to be um, something that's a little bit more refreshing. But I, I do know that there are a lot of city manager positions that are open, which means that the pool in Michigan is probably, you know, certainly sufficient enough. Um, but is it what we want? Is it what we need? Here. 
Councilman Broomfield? In, in looking at my notes, um, with Waters, uh, maybe I missed something. Did they have private experience in placement with Salt Public? Salt Public? Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, we gave all our green sheets to. Right. Yeah, we're doing it. It's okay. Yes. But they're a national company versus mostly California. Mostly the West. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember she indicated that most of their searches were in the West? Oh, that's right. They're just getting out here. Then we know Blockit has both private and non profit, or public and non profit. Right. Mayor. Councilman Eisbacher. Again, the big thing comes down to is who is the person that's doing the search and what are their skills? Um, if you get the best person at Waters, that probably blows away everyone else. And conversely, the best person at MML probably blows everyone else away. I mean, it goes down to the person. With an MML, we don't know which person we would select. Um, but the option is ours according to the interview. With the Waters Group, um, the regional person, is my understanding, is the person, the person who interviewed with us. We Charles Blockett. We have Mr. Charles Blockett. So two out of the top three, we know exactly who we have. Um, would it be good for us to figure out who within the Michigan Municipal League? Or do you believe the gentleman we spoke with, Bill Baldridge, is the uh, best person for our search. Plumbing. Regardless who we choose here, when we have the meeting, the face-to-face, -face, and we're profiling the type of people we're looking for them to, to search, that's the point where I think we specify, if it's desire of this council, that they look not only at the public sector but the private sector. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we specify that we want to see both. If that's the desire of the council, we keep coming back to that. I think we could we could uh, write that into the spec of the, of the job we're asking them to do. Who's the best qualified to find that that mix? Maybe they, they bring six people, maybe two of them have some public experience. Ideally, I'd like to see someone with public and private. I don't know if those individuals probably exist out there, but. Uh, how do you find them? Who has the skill set to find those? But I think when we, we write the, specify the job, the profile of type people, we'd want to see some of those candidates. And, would, and you're saying that we could write that for any of those companies? Potentially. Right. Potentially. There may be some that have the skill sets to find those type people better than others, but regardless who we choose, I'd really like to have that if it's the desire of this council, it would be my desire to, to specify that. Mayor. Councilman Broomfield. And, and I appreciate that about having whoever we choose to make sure that they have the resources to provide that. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure that um, for instance, the MML, I, I don't know that they go outside of their resources and bring in people from the private sector. I don't know that that's their focus. And so it's just like the argument that's been brought back by people who don't have the experience of placing in uh, public. They only do private. Well, the argument has been they don't have the experience to do public. So, you know, the rating drops on that. Um, we can. My own personal experience, you can tell a search committee what you may want, doesn't mean, unless that's not their norm, mm -hmm. it's not, they don't have avenues to go there, I'm not so sure they do. 
that that's the piece. I mean, you know, you get someone to come in, and if it's just, hey, go to the public, um, your public files and your advertisement, and bring us all the public. That's fine. Don't do it because they're good at it. What about that private piece? And, and that's been a, a desire, I think, of um, many on council here to have some of that. Councilman Beltman? Didn't we have a candidate the last time that also had not only an MPA but an MBA and some private sector experience? Last time? Did not Dan Fitzpatrick have that? Mm hmm. Did he show up? First from New York. That was Laura's dad. Oh, yeah. So we, we have gotten those kinds of candidates from public searches. I, I, again, I go back to, is it even worth it? <clears throat> because I think David said it best, you know, any successful search boils down to the commitment and creativity of the recruiter. It doesn't matter whether they're pro public or nonprofit or private. They'll do the job for you or they won't. Mayor? Councilwoman Broco. So, um, Councilwoman Belchamini, what was your suggestion? I mean, you're, you're, you're asking, is it worth it? Is it worth it to hire one of these firms and spend a minimum of $25,000, <clears> really, before you bring in a candidate, almost no matter who you choose. <clears throat> and then you bring in four candidates at at least $1,000 a piece to interview. So what would be the alternative? I don't know, but what, and I understood exactly what Peggy said, but I'm still wondering if, even if we had to do much like the legal department does for special skills to hire a vetter for the applications or something like that, and that might even be the right way to go rather than get into Peggy's department actually vetting her future boss, at least having somebody else check the references, but hire just that little piece of it. Man, Mayor. I don't know. I'm, I'm really not comfortable with that. I mean, it's, it's been made clear that they are stretched thin. And the amount of work it takes, too, to follow up, and I think that that came out clearly during the interviews, um, Councilmember Eisenbacher's question on, on, who, on tell me who else you call beyond just the references and, and what kind of 360 are you doing and how many people you're bringing. I think that that just breaks the back of this. I, 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 just, I'm, I think that's just wrong. Um, an alternative, again, is to offer an extended contract to uh, um, the current act. Now we have an acting, John Zerlag. Um, it buys time. It saves money. Looking at something like that. But since tomorrow, our clock starts ticking. Mm -hmm. April 1st? It's day after tomorrow. Well, tomorrow now. No, I, actually, we're on tomorrow. Tomorrow now. Yep. Okay. So. <laughs> Correct me once, but yeah, we're on tomorrow now. So um, we really do have to decide which way to go. I I, I would rather not um, spend this kind of money, but if if we are going to do it, I'd rather do it with the firm that that has a proven record and is the least amount of money, which is the top one. I don't care how you split it. Going into that room, you all agreed that okay, we'll follow these courses. That was the resolution that passed. This is the results that came from that. Mayor? May I put them how I? Well, I'll be about as clear as I can possibly be. That may be the case, but I don't think it's in the city's best interest to hire the MML to do this search, so. Well, we haven't even decided if we're going to go forward with the search, let alone if we want to, you know, pick anybody. We're kind of, kind of just throwing ideas out, and that's one of my ideas is that 
I don't think it's in the city's best interest to hire MML. And I think that you're splitting hairs when you're talking about cost. And, and the, the ratings for the top three, even really the top four, are quite close. Mayor. Councilman Eisenbacher. Looking at the list right now, the one I'm most comfortable with is Charles Blockett. Mm -hmm. um, curious if anyone has anything bad to say about any experiences they're aware of with him. I believe the information he gave us was good. I don't have any information on him other than what he provided us in writing and what he said tonight. Yeah, I'm just curious if That's anyone it. has aware of experience with other communities with him. No? Okay. Mayor. Councilman Broomfield? I, I'm just throwing out a suggestion here, and again, it may fall on dead ears just because we're all tired, but um, I understand the 120 days. I also know that <clears throat> if we find ourselves in a pinch, we can extend, uh, I, I think what you do is you end up appointing the current acting manager as city manager for a month or two months or whatever is is that am I correct on that? Um, you asking Mrs. Mrs. Bloom? That? that Mrs. Bloom? If you're up against the wall, uh, that is a possibility. Uh, you could you, the person could not serve as an acting, but you um, there's no time limit on uh, the time that a manager serves, so you could do that contractually. So having said that. I, I do believe that it would be, you know, a, a wise for us to look at the 120 days and move quickly through that. And we may do that. But I also think that sometimes making a decision at 12.30 in the morning when we're all exhausted. Um, I would also throw out the possibility of picking a couple of these companies that we're looking at and having a face-to-face -face interview. And we can still decide not to do it at all. Uh, but narrowing it down and then having a face-to-face -face and then taking the next step after that. I don't know that having face-to-face -face is going to give us any more than we had tonight. I think that the teleconference tonight gave us quite a bit, um, along with the, the uh, written information. I'd like to move that we accept the proposal from Charles Blockett and Associates. I'll see if there's a second and if we can move forward with this. Yeah, it says for uh, yeah, well, yeah, the official estimated cost. I'll second it for discussion. Madam Mayor. Uh, well, wait a minute. Moved by Councilman Eisenbacher, seconded by Mayor Patam Hauerlach, that we engage the firm for executive recruitment services for the position of city manager of um, Charles Blockett. Uh, March 15th. From, pardon? The date is March 15th, this March. proposal. March 15th for an estimated cost not to exceed. I believe it's based on the sheet we received that breaks it down. It's 21,000 plus expenses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, discussion, Councilman Kerwin? Well, I, again, um, I'm just looking at his 
paperwork, so page one and page two of his supply thing. And listed on all the bulletin bullets, again, this is for specifically, it says re city manager search. And all of the bullets listed, executive search examples include, where's the city manager? Now, I appreciate that um, a couple members of council want to have a wide appeal, but where is the city manager experience? That's really what we're looking for. So, although a council member spoke that, you know, didn't like to see it all in uh, uh, city manager form, this is every single one of them. It has nothing to do with city management. That's a huge concern. What are we doing? Mayor. Mayor Patem Harlech. I think that's a bit of a stretch. If you had mentioned that about, um, uh, what was that, Deacon Group, I certainly would agree with you. But um, we have the executive director of the Capital City Airport. That's the chief executive officer position of a quasi-governmental entity. We have the Berrien County Administrator, which is the chief executive of a county. We have the Ingham County Controller Administrator, same thing. M we Mayor. have the ICRC, Ingham County Road Commission, Chief Executive of the Road Commission. And then we have the Calhoun County Administrator as well. So those are very applicable. Different governmental entity. If it were a township, it wouldn't be a city manager either. I thought uh, uh, those are his references? Are those positions? He conducted the search for these. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, Councilman, um, Councilwoman Kerwin? It just proves my point. I understand that it's a list, but nowhere on that list is a city manager. Further discussion? Councilman Beltamini? Well, I, I asked that question. You know, that was the one assigned to me. And mm -hmm. he talked about the Calhoun County Administrator search and it was interesting because he didn't he didn't give us many details of that search but he did know that that was the most similar and while I appreciate that I I believe that transportation authorities of all kinds require a different breed than local government agencies I mean that I, I I don't disagree with Mayor Pro Tem Harlech and Mr. Blockett that county administrator searches are applicable. I'm not sure that the nonprofit sector gives you what you're looking for in the private sector. Um, and again, I said last week and I say again tonight, if we have to accept something that is less than everything we want, let us defer to local government professionals. And these are, I think, by and large, transportation professionals, but that's my own reading of their resume and the searches they've done. Mayor? Mayor Patent, how would I? Yeah, I, I will admit I'm not married to it. I. I, ha I have a few on here that, that I'm not the least bit thrilled with. And MML is not the only one, by the way. Um, I didn't take it personally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, and I don't, I don't know that MML would be catastrophic. I'm just, you know, my, my point was that it, it wasn't my preferred way to go, and I didn't think it was in our best interest. I think, I'm, I don't want to, and, and just tell me to shut up if I'm repeating myself too much, but you, I think you will get some interesting candidates, by the way, from Waters. Uh, you would get some national candidates, um, and you know you would get some interesting candidates with MML too. So, um, you know, certainly, um, I didn't I didn't think that Deacon Group really had anything that was really applicable to our situation, and I think that he would have been kind of going into it a little bit blind. Not that he couldn't, you know, eventually find us something, but. Well, I think it'll be interesting to see who applies um, for the position given our Michigan conditions. We may get 
a lot of people that are in other parts of the United States that don't want any part of coming to Michigan. Uh, and then we get other people that know about Troy that might want to come to Troy and see what they can do. Council Bill to me? Well, I was going to say I disagree. <laughs> and I think Michigan provides its own worst enemies. It was very interesting, um, and Council McCurlin was there as well, the Economic Development Luncheon at the Marriott last week. The speakers they had were from the entrepreneurship program at U of M Flint and the new Oakland University Med School that Beaumont is the primary hospital on. And those entities, as well as the film industry, talked about how easy it is right now in some respects to recruit people to Michigan because of the opportunities here, because of the ability to be creative, because of the breadth of skills that one can use. And for us to sit here as representatives of a Michigan community and say, I don't know who will want to come here, I think is bad representation. And it makes me angry. Well, they may want to come here for those two, for health care and for the film industry. But I don't, I am still not convinced that we're going to get a large pool from us. Excuse me, Mayor, with that kind of an attitude, we will not. Well, I've yeah. expressed my opinion, just like you have the rest of you expressing your opinion. M Mayor. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> while, while we're on this interlude, I, no, I, I think I think Councilwoman Beltramini brings up a good point because when you're in times that that challenge the status quo, you have an opportunity to to create solutions that are better than what's out there. And I think not only that, but it's un, I mean your dollar goes very far around here. I mean you can get for for on a hundred and whatever we're going to pay the new city manager, you can get a nice house. And, and it, this is this is suddenly one of the cheapest places in the country for real estate, for food. I mean, your dollar goes very far around here. Try to get that in California, even with the decrease in their property values. So I think we do have a lot of assets that uh, you know. I think um, I think that we're. I, I don't think we're going to have any any trouble finding anybody. Mayor, Mayor. Uh, who's next? Do you? I think. Councilman Eisbacher and then Councilwoman Kerwin. Yeah, I mean, echoing the comments of my two colleagues, there's more technical and, I mean, I mean just engineering abilities in this region than anywhere else in the country. There, I mean, the cost of living is cheaper here. Obviously, would you rather be buying a house here, San Francisco, New York City, Phoenix? I mean, all these places with extremely high housing costs that are, um, to a large degree, exploding. I mean, our housing prices have been quite stable compared to a lot of places around the country. Las Vegas. I, I think that this region has much more opportunity than many of the places that are generally regarded as high opportunity. Councilman Carlin. Well, um, Michigan also has the highest unemployment rate, so I wouldn't feel I would feel actually very good to hire someone from within the state. Um, nevertheless, MML does have the um, accessibility to go nationwide. They do have the link to um, national, and that is a, a big plus. So if you can go wide, you can go close. But when we were hearing the numbers in the uh, interview section over the phone of 60 applying for the Grand Rapids um, manager, so, so we know that there's a pool out there, and I thought it was interesting in one of the conversations was the fact that every week you can throw out that um, uh, net and there will be a new crew that comes through. So um, I think that the opportunities within and without are good. Um, I'm always happy to see somebody get a job in this state. We have a motion on the floor. Do you need it repeated? The block at firm. I can't support that. Mrs. Bartholomew? Councilmember Howerleck? Yes. Kerwin? No. Mayor Schilling? No. Councilmember Beltramini? No. Broomfield? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Motion passes. 
Are there any other items to come before us tonight? Okay. We're in adjournment.